Hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome to Christmas and also welcome to Manchester United against West Ham United in the Premier League and it's another fascinating story with Manchester United, isn't it? And the team that's been picked. Um, rather incredible, really. We've got uh, a young lad playing at centre-back with Johnny Evans. Um, apparently, it's our 10th centre-back uh, combination of the season so far, which I, I just find absolutely uh, incredible. Let's get that up on the screen for you now. Uh, there you go. There's the Manchester United lineup for you. Uh, pick the pips out of that. I would say that this United lineup reminds me of when I get the celebrations at Christmas and effectively... I, I take a look in there and there are things I like, like the Malteser, uh, like the Galaxy chocolate, not the caramel. Um, and then there are things I'm indifferent to, like the Snickers and the Twix. And then there are things I cannot stand, like the Milky Way. Um, and I look at that United lineup and I feel exactly like that. Um, I, 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 just, I just, I despair at some things. I understand others which concern me. And then I look at the front four and I'm happy with it. So it's... Um, it's, he's not even in FPL, uh, the lad who's playing at centre-back. But look, um, give us your thoughts. Get involved. Uh, thanks, everybody. It is Christmas, and we could do with a little bit of goodwill from West Ham, I think, today, because they've got a very strong front six of Sushek, Alvarez, Kudus, Ward-Prowse, Paqueta and Bowen. Um, that worries me against our back four of Kamwala, Evans, Shaw, Wambasaka, McTominay, Mainu and Anana. It's just not. And, and some of it's by design. I've got to say, some of it is is by design. Uh, I, I, I'm not happy with some of his um, um, with some of his selections. Uh, I think some of it's been forced on him. You can't moan about the centre backs, and I really hope he has a good game. I want to be at the end of the game saying we don't need to buy a centre back. This young lad looks like he's he's really special, but is he or has he been thrown in because we've got no many, not many, uh, we've got so many injuries. Um, Sid, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much for that. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, but look, my, my, my big thing I want to get out is the... I, I don't like the midfield. Um, I don't like the midfield. That's got nothing to do with illness or injury. That is dropping Amrabat to pick Scott McTominay. And I, I, I will call this out every day of the week. I hope it works. I really hope it works. But I said it after the Liverpool game. And I'm going to say it to you right now. I do not like that midfield. I do not like this obsession with two attacking midfielders getting forward, leaving somebody on their own. And it might work against West Ham. And bloody hell, I hope it does. Because there's no part of me that at full time, at half past two, wants to be going, get the mulled wine out, Mrs. Goldbridge. But I told you so. I told you about that midfield. But I don't know why he does it. I don't know why he's doing it. It might work against West Ham. It has worked in some games. But it more than often does not work. And, and and the scary thing about Ten Hag is I back Ten Hag, but I do not back this. And I can't justify it. I can't sit here and say, I can see what he's trying to do with that midfield. I can see what he's trying to do. You've got Amrabat on the bench. You've got Ericsson on the bench. You could play Maynou and Amrabat, Maynou and Ericsson. It's, um, it, you know, it, it worries me. This is a great one from Robert McCormack. He says the shirt numbers add up to 297, which has got to be a record. Um, there you go. There's one for the boffins, does it? Um, uh, McTominay at centre-back, Amrabat in the midfield, says Kyle. Could have done that. But I, ju I just, I ju I look, I, I don't think some people understand this. I've worked for a lot of people in my life, in a lot of different jobs. And the people I've respected the most, I have stood up to them and said, I don't agree with that. And then if they're the boss, they're the boss. But I've said, I don't agree with that. Even though I loved working for them and I respected them. I've played football for many different managers as well. And at half time, we've had disagreements because I'm quite vocal. But they're the manager. All I'm saying here is, I don't understand why he keeps picking McTominay and Bruno when we're having a shit season because our midfield keeps getting overrun. I, 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 it really pisses me off. Uh, Big Willie getting a clean sheet today, says John. Yeah, uh, cue all the Willie jokes, cock and all that. Uh, his name's uh, obviously... His first name's Willie, but I'm just going to call him Kamwala, who plays at centre-back for Manchester United. We don't know a lot about him. Um, I'm sure some of you will from the youth setup. so let us know what your thoughts are. He's 19 years of age, um, and um, he, was only 19, he was only 19 in August. But, uh, yeah, I don't really know a lot about this lad. It's going to be interesting. And 
and I would say there, look, I can be, I can moan about the midfield and I can't stand the midfield and Ten Hag has to take respect. It's really pissing me off, as you know. Um, I'm really pissed off about, about that midfield, really pissed off about it and worried about it. But when it comes to the back four, I've got nothing but love. You cannot do anything about that back four. Varane is sick. Martinez is injured. Lindelof's had an operation. Maguire is injured. That's your four best centre-backs out. So there's nothing you can do. You could have put Luke Shaw at left centre-back and played Regwell on. Obviously, he doesn't want to do that. You could have played McTominay at centre-back and had a better midfield. He doesn't want to do that. But look, you can't moan about the back four, really. Uh, Delo is suspended as well. Danny Dorito says, This Kamwala is really impressive. We bought him for 4 million euros in 2020. His youth highlights are spectacular. There you go. Thanks, Danny. I would protect Kambala with playing Amrabat and Maynard in the midfield. I feel he will be exposed. Says Tibor. Look, Ten Hag needs to do a bit of a list history lesson here. Even as somebody who's Ten Hag in, Ten Hag needs to do a history lesson. Have a look at what sacked Oli. He kept sticking with people like McTominay stubbornly and he got sacked. You are sticking with this midfield thing. And what worries me about Ten Hag is, it's not just McTominay. He could have dropped Bruno and played McTominay as the attacking midfielder, but he was shit as the attacking midfielder, so he hasn't done it. What worries me about Ten Hag is, when Mount's back, he'll still do it. He'll play Mount and Bruno and one holding midfielder. It's pissing me off. It's not McTominay. It just pisses me off that he keeps playing two advanced midfielders and one holding midfielder. And it, we're going to get screwed. We're going to get done over. And he can't figure it out. He hasn't figured it out this season. He can't figure it out that it, the team is playing shit because we keep getting uh, run over. Um, but where I am happy is I'm happy with the front three. I am happy with the front three. Welcome to the Members Club, Casey. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Don't forget, you can check out our Christmas show on the Members section. Really appreciate that. Uh, DK says, I think we're going to get stuffed. I, I Look, I've got a feeling Rasmus is going to score. Um, I've got me a Ganacho Christmas jumper on. We're away against Everton. It's festive. I do not want Man United dropping points. This is Christmas time. We don't want to be thinking for the next two days over Christmas, chewing on our turkey, thinking what's going to happen against Villa. We're in real big trouble. You know, we've, we've got to go out there today and get a result. It is as simple as that. Um, do I think, um, look, the defence worries me, of course it does. But do I think that uh, we've got a chance of doing it? You look at that league table. If West Ham beat us, they go above us. Um, Brighton obviously drew, so they can't go above us. Chelsea can't catch us. So we could be eighth if we lose this game. We've got, I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, you know, Villa drew with Sheffield United last night. Win tonight, win today. 31 points, beat Villa, 34 points. You're still five points behind them, but you've closed that gap. Lose today and then lose to Villa. We're going to be 42. We're going to be 14 points off them. Top four is gone. So it's um, I was thinking about that this morning. If we beat West Ham and we beat Villa, we're five points off Villa and we've got a chance at going into the second half. If we lose today and we lose against Villa, we're 14 points off Villa. Top four is gone. So it is that important. It is that important. So Jim Dale is to be announced next week, says Neam. I don't think anyone gives a shit anymore, to be honest. I think I think that ship has sailed. Uh, Mark, you had a go at Solskjaer for playing with the double fit pivot. Now you're complaining about enter. No, Remy, Remy, football's not for you, mate. I'm sorry. Can somebody just shut Remy up? Because I've never heard something stupid in all my life. Do you think I watch football in a simplistic way? Do you think if you play two holding midfielders, you do it like fucking Ollie did? Ollie had a back four and two holding midfielders stood on the edge of the box. You can play two midfielders in a completely different way to the way Ollie did it. Ideally, I would like one to sit and one to be a box-to-box. -box. What we do is we have one sit and two going into the box. You've, what I'm saying is you, you can't just have one midfielder. It's what we've been doing all season. One midfielder on their own whilst McTominay plays next to Hoyland and Bruno runs around everywhere. You know, you've got to have... What I'm saying is I, I don't care about having a double pivot... What I want is a six and an eight. I don't want two sixes. I understand why we did it at Anfield, but I want a six and an eight. I want two midfielders to help the defence out. At the moment, we have one. That's my point. Um, welcome to the Members Club, Jacob Lee. Thank you very much for joining. Aiden says, just got here. What's your thoughts on Kambwala? I, I don't know, Aiden. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by this. I have got no issue with it. What are you supposed to do? I'm also very happy with the front three, by the way. Um, I actually predicted that he would go with Rashford, so I'm happy with that front three. Um, hi, Mark. Love watching your watch alongs. Hope you have a great Christmas as you, you too. Merry Christmas to everybody. It is Christmas. So let's be festive before the game because you never know what's going to happen during it. Hopefully United don't ruin my birthday at 4.30, says Raffo. Welcome to the Members Club, Daniel. And uh, 
Eric Ten Hag is not protecting his back line. There's no actual DM in front of a first team starter. I'm Eric Ten Hag in, but how does he keep making the same mistakes as Ria? Look, Ria, I'm going to, I will write this down. Uh, midfield for after the game, right? Amrabat played really well against Bayern Munich. Amrabat against Liverpool, we kept a clean sheet. Amrabat against West Ham, you dropped. The fuck's it all about? Bruno McTominay against Bayern Munich, shite. McTominay against Liverpool, shite. Starts against West Ham. This is my problem. I'm, I'm doing this on form. Why is he? Why does he keep doing it? You know why he keeps doing it? Because he's praying that Scott McTominay's going to prance into the fucking uh, uh, the, the opposition's penalty box like Rudolph and whack it in the top corner, which he's capable of doing. But he ain't capable of doing the defensive work. And he's also picking him because he's tall. And I'm fed up of this shit as well. I'm calling this out as well. I'm fed up of picking Scott McTominay because he's tall. We're Manchester United. Does Pep Guardiola pick a tall player when he's playing West, West Ham? No, he's got some tall players that are good at football. Does Liverpool pick a tall player because they're playing West Ham? No, they pick, they pick players to play their system. We pick McTominay because he's tall. It's fucking stupid how thick we are. And you know where it comes from? The training ground. Because we used to do it with Ollie as well. And we've still got the same coaches in the manager's ear going, <clears throat> it'd be good if we've got someone tall for set pieces. And we're still fucking doing it five years later. We're still picking tall players. Let's uh, gamble. Regwalon and Delo, both centre midfield, both speedy defend. Uh, Alif, you can't pick uh, Delo because he's, uh, he's suspended, mate. Um... I don't trust Eric Ten Hag at all. Varane illness equals something else. Eric Ten Hag has got an issue with him, says Jack. No, I, I do think Varane is ill. I mean, he was man of the match against Liverpool. I mean, why would you, why would you, um, why would you kick uh, Varane out of the team after his man of the match to maybe lose a game? Look, if Ten Hag loses today, he's under massive pressure again. Andrew Lloyd has just gifted 20 memberships. Merry Christmas and well done to Andrew Lloyd. He's a legend. Daddy indeed. Welcome to the Members Club. I'm just concerned about the midfield. Everything else is fine, says Merck. Um, let's get it to Hoyland. Uh, Gastaf, I just want, all I want for Christmas is Hoyland to score. I mean, I want Man United to win. But I really want him to score. Have a Christmas uh, drink, Mark, and your family. I despair at the lineup, especially McTominay, who will sack himself, says Anthony Stubbs. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Thanks for the super chats that are coming in. Really appreciate that. Merry Christmas. Remind me on the morning show tomorrow. Remind me on the morning show tomorrow to um, gift out the memberships. I will remember, but um, I know some of you will be on the morning show at 10 o'clock tomorrow. And um, I've got some memberships to give away because we've got part two of the Christmas show coming out tomorrow uh, on the channel on the members section so i want to give some memberships as well uh warren g says all i want for christmas is a united win today one of our members there thank you mate and uh uh brian says uh, that uh Kamwala did well in training according to ten according to ten hog well we've got some quotes coming in from eric ten hog so let's let's talk about those 15 minutes away from the start of this game uh, he said, why, "Why? when you can make your debut with a very experienced player next to you, Johnny Evans, he's got so many games in the Premier League, he will get the right coaching. I think also Luke Shaw and Arna in the back, they can help those players. Um, that's from Eric Ten Hag. Um, and uh, look, I think it's, um, I, I just want that lad to do well. You know, when it comes to the youth players, I want them to do well. Um, I think we all agree with that. Uh, Ten Hag said he's a calm lad. He's made a good impression in training, but of course he's inexperienced and this is a big moment for him. He's athletic, calm on the ball, and now he has his opportunity. Look, if he does well, he's a right-footed centre-back, I presume. I think he's right-footed. If he does well, potentially, there's a there's a job there for him over the next uh, few weeks. So let's, let's wait and see. But uh, it's a huge game for him. Uh, a huge game for him. And, you know, you've got a 19-year-old centre-back. You've got an 18-year-old holding midfielder. You've got a 19-year-old winger in Ganacho. On the positive side of things, you look at that team, uh, uh, Rasmus is 20, Ganacho's 19, um, you've got 18-year-old Mainu, you've got 19-year-old Kamwala. There is some youth players in there and um, I, I hope they do well. I really do. But I think it's going to be different. You know, it's difficult. You never know what you're going to get with West Ham. You, you just don't know what you're going to get with West Ham and you don't know what you're going to get with Manchester United. Um, and uh, there we go. Um Faz says, Faz, Faz on Twitter says, come on, Big Willie, we are behind you. Um, at least, at least you, you, yeah, at least you're not in front of him. I don't know what he's talking about there. Um, 
yeah, well, look, uh, a lot of people getting their comments in. Let me just read some of these. Merry Christmas, Mark. Thanks for all the fantastic content over the years, says Fox. Uh, Hi, Mark. Been watching for a long time. Thanks for the content and the Glazers going off. Fucking out, says Daddy. Indeed. Are you confident with that midfield, says Sim? And don't you think that the defence we have a kind of gamble having all these injuries, says Merck? And uh, true respect is being able to disagree with someone without the effect in your point of view or belief on someone, says Zimily. Uh, welcome to Members Club Shanka and uh, welcome to Members Club Daddy indeed. And Andrew Lloyd is a legend for giving 20 memberships. Can I just shout out, um, it's a great point by Simile, and uh, I don't think people understand this. I get it all the time. You know, you criticise something Ten Hag does and you're Ten Hag out. No, this is get in the real world and grow the fuck up. Like, that's not how life works. That's not how life works at all. Too many people in modern society live in the red or the green. They're either positive or negative. And there, there's a world in between and that's where you should be. If I, if, I, if I absolutely back everything Ten Hag does, I'm a bloody goldfish. But if I disagree with something he does, I'm not Ten Hag out. I, I, I absolutely agree with what has been said that um, he'll sack himself with that midfield. Eventually, he's going to sack himself with that midfield. Um, but I, I, he's not the first manager to do it. Ten Hag was doing it as well. He, this obsession with stupid things, maybe that's why Man United just needs breaking down and starting again. Because we... We've never really got to grasps with how to play a midfield in the Premier League since Sir Alex Ferguson left. I, I think most of our midfield constructions out, uh, across the last five managers has been abysmal. We just do not seem to be able to construct a midfield of a really good six, a really good eight and Bruno. We've, we've never done it. And, you know, we've come close a few times. But and then we end, and, and also what, what, what pisses me off is that when things start going wrong, we don't seem to be able to change it. I mean, I literally, I, I, I would happily ring Ten Hag up now. And, and if he said to me, I'll take McTominay out of the team and I'll put Amrabat in if you give me 10 grand. I'd be back on this chat saying, let's raise 10 grand, grand in 10 minutes. And, I, and we'd do it because I absolutely convinced that Amrabat and Mainu with Bruno ahead of them is a better midfield than Mainu, McTominay and Bruno. Because what happens with McTominay in the team is Bruno starts fucking off everywhere. He'll be at right back, left back, left wing. He'll go all over the place. And I just want Bruno to play as the 10. And he can play as the 10 if you've got Amrabat and Mainu there. Wouldn't it be better if Ten Hag only subbed McTominay on when we're losing? Well, 100% max. I think that ten. Uh, I think Scott McTominay in the last 20 minutes would be useful. I'm six foot nine. I might rock up to Carrington to see if I can make bag myself a roll for 2024, says Mark. You've probably got a chance, Mark. Uh, Akshay and Gellen, welcome to the Members Club. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Eddie says Amrabat is not as good as McTominay. And yet Amrabat played fantastic against Bayern Munich and did his job against Liverpool. And McTominay didn't. So, you know, let's go on recency bias or let's just go on fact. McTominay's not a better player than Amrabat in the in, in the midfield where we need him to be. McTominay is good if you want to score a goal. And he, you know what? If he scores today, Ten Hag wins. 100%. But how many games does McTominay not score in? And, and, and it's become a written fact if McTominay doesn't score, he has a shit game. He has to score to have a good game. He's like Havertz at Arsenal. If he doesn't score, he doesn't really do anything. So he has to score. Uh, Dowie says, stop the hate against McTominay. Well, you're an idiot as well because it's not hate, mate. It's just, a, it's just an opinion you don't like and you're immature because you can't deal with it. Happy Christmas, Mark. Good luck with the diet in New York in the New Year. So Steve, thanks, mate. And food hygiene is a one star at Old Trafford, says Nay. In the US and just woke up, what happened to Varane, says uh, Brandon. He's ill. And hi, Mark. If Eric loses to Villa and West Ham, his job is in danger. Well, it has to be, Tom. I don't want that to happen, but it has to be. I wouldn't sack the manager, but you know what? If we lose the next two games, even I would say, you know, it's not looking good, bruv. Uh, McTominay or Amrabat, Paul? I will let the chat decide. Um, it's no skin off my nose. He's not starting anyway. Um, please do subscribe to the channel, by the way. We may, may, we may or may not do it. You know, Man United may not win today or they may win. Hopefully they will. Rasmus may or may not score today. Hopefully he will. But something that is in your hands is we could hit 1.8 million today. We are on 797,000. So, you know, it'd be nice to do it for Christmas. Uh, bottom right hand corner to subscribe and obviously if you have subscribed you can click the share button and just share it on your socials so please do subscribe let's see if we can get close to 1.8 million before christmas i'm sure
sure we'll get it done before New Year, but uh, let's try and get it done for Christmas. It's a great community and you're all absolute legends. Uh, score predictions. Has any of you changed your score predictions based on the team that is out? Um, I would say... Uh, I would say... No, I, I I think United have to win, but I was never very confident saying we were going to win. I personally think I'm leaning a little bit towards more of a draw now. Um, yeah, I, I am leaning a little bit towards a draw because I think that um, West Ham are a bit of a counter-attacking side. And I would not expect us to be playing in a way that we get counted upon. I think we might play quite defensive here. So I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to go with a draw. Um, so yeah, we, we, we'll see what happens with that. Um, right, where are we? We're in London, aren't we? We actually are in London, aren't we? We are in London. We are in London. We actually are in London, aren't we? Right, um, let me come back to the chat here. Play ratings in the second half. Mark every player out of 10, six being the average. And don't forget as well... Um, We've got our live stats, which will be going around the screen. Let me uh, familiarise you with that. There uh, it is. So that'll update as the game is going on. Our live stats are sponsored by OneFootball. You can download that through the link in the description, or you can go through the QR code in the top right-hand corner. Get all your latest breaking football news and transfer news on the OneFootball app for free. Follow Man United or any other club you want to follow. Uh, also, interestingly, on the on the app, you can go into the West Ham Man United game and you can get individual stats as well. So you can see how many people, how many touches people get, etc., etc. Free to download. Links in the description. Scan the QR code. Um, right, I've uh, got a few uh, uh, super chats and stuff to catch up on here. I don't think his job is in danger. Look at the defence he's got to play with, says Capley. Yeah, but he's picking the midfield. Have a great Christmas, everyone, says Flory. Uh, hope, here's hoping for six points um, over the next two games. Uh, Glenn's got a bad feeling about it. Barella is perfect for what we need. We just need a number eight, Dan. We need a number eight. Mark, it's either going to go well or we're going to get battered. Hoyland must score today, says Christoph. I would replace Bruno and McTominay with maybe Amrabat. Bruno only tries the final pass. Um, Ugg says, love the content, Mark. Thank you very much. Mark, one thing Ten Hag says, he wants better performance on the ball and he then selects McTominay. How does that work, says Shanker. Uh, I'd play Mabry over Scott any day of the week, says Milton. We sold Fred and we kept McTominay. It's absolute criminal, says Kylo. Hi, Mark. If Eric Lu I've done that one from Tom Harvey as well. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you think Eric is using Scott as a 10 like Mount, says Leon? Well, again, he, I think he will use McTominay more advanced, but then you're taking Bruno into a number eight position and he's not a number eight. This is what I mean. There's no balance to that midfield. I can't see us ever getting back to the top, says Reb. Look, what I will say is, and we've seen it before, we might win today and that midfield therefore works. But what will happen is, and I will tell you this simply and clearly, that midfield... That midfield that Man United are playing today, that he that he keeps sticking with, will keep, will get beat again. Newcastle, look at Newcastle. It was the same midfield against Newcastle. We got absolutely bullied. Maynu, McTominay, and Bruno. We've seen it before. People keep living in this fantasy world that it's going to work. It's not going to work. It might work against West Ham. It might work against Palace. It might work every now and again. But it won't. It's not a midfield you can build upon. It's a stop gap and, and it's got massive gaps in it. So I just want him to stop doing it. Obviously, I want to win today and I, I think we can win. But that midfield worries me and I'm never going to shut up about it. Merry Christmas. What players would you take from West Ham to the current squad? Says uh, I've. Well, let's have a look at the West Ham side on the screen because uh, there we go. Um, look, I wouldn't take Ward Prowse. There's one player in their midfield I'd be very interested in and that's Alvarez. Even if we buy number eight, there's always the chance Ten Hag won't pick him anyway, says Patrick. And hi, Mark. Knowing United game is on always makes my day and always have your live stream playing in the background, which annoys my wife, says Kazzy. Uh, shout out to Kazzy's wife. Uh, have, a, have a great Christmas and New Year, Mark. Uh, let's hope we win today, says Paul. Look, I'm happy with the front three. We've not spoken about the front three. I'm happy with the front three. Um... I think Newcastle's, uh, sorry, I think West Ham's front three is a danger as well. Paqueta was brilliant and has been very good the last few weeks. Bowen's been incredibly prolific. And Kudus is a good player as well. So I'm inter I think they can hurt us. I think West Ham can hurt us. It just depends which West Ham turns up. Defensively, they were shite against Liverpool and they were shit against Fulham. So they can have bad days. I'm happy with our front three. I, I, I like... Um, 
I like the fact that Ganacho's playing and Anthony's playing. I think there's this myth going round at the moment that Anthony's playing badly when I just really don't think he is. But um, it, it comes down to the midfield and they've got a good midfield. Sushek, Alvarez and Ward-Prowse is a good midfield. And I just wonder, I think there's a lot of pressure on Mainu. Mainu's probably the one player in our midfield and he's 18 who I trust. I don't, I don't really trust, you know, Bruno's had a bit of an up and down season this year, hasn't he? Um, I don't really trust McTominay, as we've said. So I think Mainu is the player that I probably trust the most. Um, and yet, he's only 18 years of age. So, you know, it's um, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. And look, I hope it's going to work. I really do. Because we, we don't want to be... Um, we don't want to be losing at any time. But we certainly don't want to be losing ahead of a, a massive game uh, like this, do we? But uh, look, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, I'm sure it's going to be interesting. And um, look, the one thing I will say is you can't be beaten before the whistle's kicked. And uh, under no circumstances do we let that happen. It's the same mistake we walked in last week. A lot of people thought last week that we were going to lose to Liverpool badly and we didn't do it. And we need that sort of mentality again. The only difference for me is we're not playing fucking Liverpool. We're playing West Ham. And uh, Liverpool, a point was acceptable. But against West Ham, um, it's got to be a win. It's got to be a win for me. Yeah, it's um, it's got to be a win, and um, the players are in the tunnel anyway. Attacking wise, do you think this team can exploit West Ham's defensive weaknesses, even though we've struggling for goals? Says Ria. I, I, I'm interested to see how the balance of the play is. Wolves had more possession against West Ham last week and got beat three 0 on the break. Is Eric Ten Hag naive enough to try and do that? Eric Ten Hag isn't stupid and is not afraid to make difficult decisions. Why does he stick with this midfield? Says Reb. Well, yeah, it baffles me. Wixter has been a member for 15 months. Uh, Cyber Spider says, I want Eric to stay uh, and win, but maybe it might take a thrashing for him to wake up to midfield problem. I, I don't think it will, Cyber. He's already had thrashings. He's already had them. That Newcastle game should have been a thrashing and he played the same midfield three. Um, I think that's um, that's the one I remember recently, but he's probably done it before. Mark, check the number of times McTominay doesn't go for aerial challenges in the midfield against Liverpool. It was appalling. So much for height, says Frederick. Thank you very much. Right, uh, we're about ready to go. Um, players are coming out onto the pitch. We're three minutes away. Um, I don't know how your Saturday's looking, but uh, obviously we've got uh, the game for you, the match reaction, and then we've got the fan forum. And then at five o'clock, I'm live on That's Football for Liverpool against Arsenal. Um, and then we sort of wrap up uh, our match watch alongs until Boxing Day. But we will be live tomorrow morning with a with a Sunday morning show, Christmas Eve. Um, and then we've got the preview for Villa on the evening. And then we've got our traditional Christmas show on Christmas Day, which is our best bits of the year, which I actually was laughing to myself. I, you forget. You forget. You remember this season, but you forget like last February, March and stuff. So looking forward to that coming out on Christmas Day as well as always. And then, of course, we've got Villa on Boxing Day night, which um, lo lo I hope it's not a knockout blow. Let's see what happens. But I, I'm, I'm massively in the air about this one. I don't know what your what your thoughts are. Do get your score predictions in. But I, I don't know which way this goes, really. Um, you know, it really is toss a coin time. I, I, I just I have no confidence that we're that we'll, 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 we'll get a comfortable result. But on the other hand, I'm not absolutely convinced that we should be just going West Ham as the favourites. I think that um, you've got to take that result from Liverpool, know that they're not going to be as hard West Ham and use that in a positive way to grab hold of this game. That's the way I look at it. Um, but um, reckon Eric's trying to convince them to buy Scott, says Blue. And uh, I wish you Merry Christmas, says Shashank. I wish you Merry Christmas as well. Uh, Patrick, we've read that one. And Ive says, what players would you take from the current West Ham squad? Um, well, I quite like Alvarez. Um, Kudos looks good. Paqueta looks good. So it's all in there. I wouldn't take Ward-Prowse. Um, George says, according to UEFA rules, Man United, Man City or Girona will not be allowed to play in the Champions League next season, even if they qualify as they share the same ownership. I think that rule is going to change, George, because it's the same for us with uh, Sir Jim and Nice. 
Uh, good day, Mark. Looking forward to the game. Your commentary is always great to listen to, even though my girlfriend gives me an annoyed look when I listen to you, says Nick. Shout out to Nick's girlfriend as well. Uh, Varan's ill, Zippy. He's ill. Who's Kamwala, says Silent Ninja. He is a 19-year-old youth player um, who's making his debut because we've got no other centre-backs. It's sink or swim, isn't it? But Ten Hag obviously thinks he can swim. Uh, what you got said for Christmas is LC. I'm not going to tell you that because you can probably hear. And more chance of doing Elvis than this midfield working, says Reb. Well, what I will say is, defensively, you can't moan too much. You know, you've got a 19-year-old lad making his debut away from home. It's tough. So I don't moan about the defence. <clears throat> the attack, I don't moan about the attack. Um, I also think Johnny Evans, you know, we're talking about Kamwala. I don't think Johnny Evans is that good. I know he's been good for us this season, but we know, you know, I don't think he's that good, Johnny Evans, really, when you think about the top centre-backs in the league. So I think we're vulnerable at the back and there's not a lot we can do about it. The front three I'm happy with. The midfield, for me, is where Ten Hag has made a major risk that he could have changed. That's the area. And that's where games are won and lost. So let's wait and see. Wouldn't it be better if Ten Hag sugged McTominay? We've done that. We've done that. Thank you very much, Max. Uh, we're about to kick off here. 80% of you prefer Amrabat over McTominay, by the way. So uh, that's democracy for you. Uh, Vita says, with all the analysts, coaches and video reviews, how can Ten Hag can't see the weak points, even as fans can see it? I mean, this is a great point, Vita. It's a great point because Eric Ten Hag is better than all of us as a coach. He is better than all of us. But... You know, every analyst on, on radio, every analyst on the TV, every Man United fan can see our midfield is ridiculously overrun game after game. I'm ill because Varane is ill, says Thomas. Must be contagious, says Thomas. And uh, hope Willie doesn't flop, says Stephen. I knew it. I knew it at some point we're going to get something like that. Right, we've started off here. It's a bit of a shit ang uh, camera angle for West Ham as well. Um, Matt loves watermelon. Well, here we go. Kamwala getting an early touch on the ball is good. And uh, Anthony into Bruno. Uh, Mainu dropping in between the centre-backs, which is good. Same thing here. The wife is annoyed when I listen to you, but I'm here since Sancho 90% club. 7th of July, number 7. If you know, you know, says Attila. Uh, Ganacho's lost the ball there, but... Um, the United shape is interesting. McTominay is playing a little bit deeper, which is a positive. Um, I don't want him running forward much, really, today. And I want Bruno to play as the 10. Alan Casey, welcome to Members Club. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure to subscribe, by the way. We're going to try and get up to 1.8 million today. So bottom right-hand corner to subscribe. And you can share the video if you've subscribed. Um... West Ham just got hold of the ball here. Um, there's a nervousness to this game. I don't know how you feel, but, you know, in, in, in games you have different feelings, don't you, game to game. And I know we've lost at Old Trafford a few times this season, but I didn't really expect that when the whistle blows to be losing to teams like Bournemouth and Crystal Palace. But... Um, Away to West Ham. I remember, I remember Mourinho losing here. It was the game where I, I decided I was Jose out, actually. I, hi, hi, Mark. Merry Christmas. I'm worried about the match. The midfield is weak and the defence, but I'm going for a win. Look, I, I, I don't really care how we win today. I'm with you, Mohamed. Um, Mohamed Idris, I'm with you. as um, It's Christmas time. We all want to go and spend a bit of time, you know, doing other things. Um, and uh, I don't want to be thinking about Ten Hag's job or... United's midfield tomorrow. Um, I want to be in a happy place and uh, hopefully United can put us there. I'd love Rasmus to score as well. Uh, who's the referee? It's that Mason. Is it Mason? He's, the, he's bold, but it's not Anthony Taylor. But uh, West Ham will let us have the ball here. And Arna's way out of his box with the ball. West Ham will let us have the ball and they'll encourage us to play a higher line, which you've got to be very careful about because... Johnny Evans is slow. So they love West Ham for you to come on to them. And they like to counter. So we're going to have a lot of the ball at the back. 
But where's McTominay in this picture again? Look, they've just got the ball and McTominay's only just jogging back now. He's got to fucking... He's got to do his work. He's got to, he's got to help Maino out. And of course, um, look, I, I, I've not disrespected West Ham at all. I don't think anybody has, but it's Christmas. It's We're in London. It's a big ground. I was managing here, actually, in the Sidemen game. And, um, you know, it's a big, it's 60,000, isn't it? So they'll be up for it. This place passes already, says Harley. Yeah, you've got to keep be careful about this sort of stuff. Early shot and uh, Anana gets two hands on it which you'd expect, but uh, at least he pushed it away out of danger and uh, Luke Shaw clears it. Uh, Regardless of all the negatives, I could never give up the feeling of mornings like these with United to wake me up, says Kyle. And Glenn Foster, welcome to members club. I just, I just, des you know what, Carl? I just desperately want us to win today. And I, uh, shot over the bar there from uh, Ward Prowse. Phantom says Luke Shaw's looking a bit tired. That was a Goldbridge save, that was, by an Arna. Two hands on it, get it out of danger. If you know, you know. If you've seen the video on That's Football with Goldbridge in goal, gets better in the final, part two tomorrow. But uh, it was a very Goldbridge-esque save there from an Arna. He's definitely been watching that video. Get your two hands on it, get it out of danger. What do you think about the midfield so far, Mark? I think it's uh, I think it's early days. Alex Scott, welcome to Members Club. Thank you very much for joining. It's early days. I mean, we've only had five minutes. I wouldn't. I don't really judge a game until 15, 20 minutes in, and even then, the game the game can change. Good play by West Ham here. Although that's going to go out for throwing. Leah Rooney, thank you very much for joining the Members Club. Don't forget, members, to check out part one of the Christmas show we did in Manchester last week. Uh, part two goes out tomorrow. Um... Yes, please. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The, the watch along with Goldbridge singing Christmas. No, I'm not really doing that. Uh, and Andrew, welcome to the Members Club. Cutter, Paquette is so good, says Marvin. Here's uh, Rasmus trying to get McTominay in. He ain't going to catch that. Uh, what's it going to take for Scott to get benched? The sack, says Stuart. We can't, why can't you see the issue here? You can't keep defending this guy, says Stuart. I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, Cy, Owen and Andrew, welcome to the Members Club as well. Um, look, I don't wish illness on anybody, but um, I would 100% rather Varane was well and McTominay had a cold um but uh it is what it is I, I I don't I don't you know what I, the thing is I don't actually blame Scott McTominay it's not his fault he gets picked for Manchester United I'm sure he bloody loves it I mean look if you were Scott McTominay and the manager says I'm picking you again would you go no I'm not good enough you should be picking Amrabat you're gonna bloody love it aren't you it's not I think it's very important to make that point because people get frustrated with McTominay, but it's not actually his fault. He doesn't pick himself. I think we must remember that, you know. Pedro says, do you think that Man United should sign Neves, uh, João Neves in the summer? Merry Christmas. I don't think they'll have the money, mate. Benfica will ask for a lot of money. He's the, uh, it's Silva who's the centre-back and Neves is the holding midfielder. I mean, I'd love to go for him. What do you call a man with no shins? Tony, says Viking. Christmas cracker, that. Well, the game's settled down a little bit. I do love the youth side, the youth of this side, says Reb. Don't worry, he's not a nonce. He just means he likes the young players coming through. Uh, obviously, we've got Mainu 18, 19, Kambuala, Ganacho's 19, um, Hoyland's 20. He's playing McTominay to increase his values as Emiliano. He's not. He's playing McTominay because he wants to pick Scott McTominay, let's be honest. As baffling as it is, he is doing that. 
Uh, do we know when Casemiro, Martinez and Mount are back, says Glenn? Yes, we do. Uh, it was announced yesterday. He will be back. Um, uh, they will all be back in mid-November. Um, and I, I I think Eric Ten Hag believes McTominay is one of their only chances of scoring goals, says just JD. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what it is. Because if he scores a goal in the Premier League, a goal is valuable, isn't it? And United, I think we're, we're bottom of the league for goal efficiency or something like that. I saw something yesterday. So a player that can score your goals is very valuable, but he can't do anything else. So if he, if he doesn't score, he's a passenger, isn't he? Well played, Maynou. Luke Shaw is moving to centre when out the left wing is under attack. Shaw is moving inside of Evans, says Anne. And Anil Sucker. And uh, what do you call a man with a spade in his head? Doug, uh, says Jake. And what about a man without a spade in his head? Douglas. Merry Christmas and Moyes smells. Pass it on. There you go, Jake. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everyone, who's tuning in. Uh, how do you know that Anana hates doing his laundry? No clean sheets, says Merck. He's got, but actually, he has actually got a lot of clean sheets in the Prem. In fact, who scored had Anana as the goalkeeper in the team of the season so far, which tells you that who scored player ratings are rubbish because is Luke Shaw? Oh, it's gone to the keeper because there is no way that Anana is the best goalkeeper in the Premier League this year. Vicario, Martinez, Allison, straight away. So, but I don't know. I don't know how they do their player ratings. They're weird. They they had I think they had McTominay against Liverpool as our as the best midfielder on the pitch. Times End says it's a boring game already. See, I, I never get that boring thing when it's your club playing, um, especially when it's United and we're not very good. If we were Man City and top of the league and we'd started like this, I'd be pissed off. But we're Manchester United. We're pretty shit this season. So for me, nil nil and. Uh, Steady start is not a bad thing. Somebody said it's a crap atmosphere. Well, that's good for us, isn't it? Missing Goldbridge ball in London Stadium. Anyway, goalless uh, Q, XQC and Anana are the same. Merry Christmas, Mark. Says right. It's amazing, actually, that I was managing here just a few short months ago. And I got to have a few shots on the goal as well. These pitches are just ridiculous. I'm hoping to do a bit. I mean, it's ridiculous. I've been doing this game for 10 years and I never really did any football stuff. And now at my age, I'm getting more and more opportunities to do football challenge stuff, which we'll be doing more of in 2024. But uh, I just keep, I'm too old for it. Too old for it. Diving around. Here's Anthony. Come on, keep the temp. Move it quicker. We slow the fucking game down in the final third so bad. That's good by Bruno. Here's Ganacho. This is better. Go on, drive, lad. Drive, drive into the box. Hold it up, hold it up. Wins a corner. That's better. Get get that tempo going. Too slow. Too slow. Never a dull moment with United, says Rock of Bolton. Bourne says he'd like to thank the person who gifted him a membership. It came early. There you go. Why didn't Ten Hag go for kudos over Anthony, says Ben. Well, why does Ten Hag pick McTominay and Ben Jamrabat? You know, he's got his own ideas, hasn't he? Uh, here's Bruno. Come on, that's got to go into the box. Not a great cross. I've played the game, says Fade. We're in London, aren't we? Says Gavin. Well, a bit of possession for United here. Luke Shaw in behind to Bruno. And uh, I don't like these no-look crosses. Like, Ganacho's done one and Bruno's just done one. They've got no idea what's behind them. You could take a touch and come back onto your stronger foot. These no-look crosses are a fucking waste of time. You get into positions like that, just keep the possession. You don't have to whip across in blindly.
Mainu. Nice ball into Evans. Come on. Bit of possession for United now. This sort of falls into West Ham's trap, though. They like this. You've got to be careful of this with West Ham because you're in the final third possession, but they like it. They like to break on you, so you've got to be very careful about that. Uh, Robbo says, why not play Luke Shaw left centre-back and put uh, Regulon at left-back? I think Regulon's fell out with Ten Hag. <laughs> He's, um, this seems to happen quite a lot. He was a very important player when Luke Shaw was injured. But uh, since Luke Shaw's been back, Regulon never gets picked. Um, here we go. Look, here's the West Ham break I told you about. And uh, that's... Uh... Not a foul. Robert says, I've just seen the McTominay's playing. Ten Hogs are full. Kufel's gone down there, but there's nothing in that. It's not even a foul for me. Not even a foul for me. Uh, just a bit of break in the play here. Please do subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner. We're going to try and get to 1.8 million tonight. We're not at seven. We're not at 798,000 yet. So please do subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner. Get involved with the United Stand. We're live every night at eight o'clock. Every morning at ten o'clock, and everything that goes on between watch-alongs, match reactions, transfer news, uh, all sorts, all sorts. Music Light Show says, who the hell is Kambwala? Well, he's a 19-year-old from the youth setup who's playing at centre-back for Manchester United because Rafael Varane's ill, Lindelof, Martinez and Maguire are injured and uh, what a waste of a time that was. A 40-yard ball to McTominay who can't control it and West Ham win the ball back. I mean, it's a fucking waste of time. What, what, why, if you're Bruno Fernandes there? Uh, Simon Hooper, Hooper, the last good ref we have, says Sam. Why, if you're Bruno Fernandes, do you look up and see Scott McTominay and try and hit him with a 40-yard pass? If it's Rashford, I understand it, but not McTominay. It's a waste of time. Keep the possession. Trying to transition with a ball to Scott McTominay. It's like taking your gran out on a date. It's a fucking weird. Um, well, I, I went I went one one in this game. Oh, here's Bowen. Oh, he's gone wide with that. And to uh, yeah, to me it looks like it's going to be a very tight twelve o'clock. 12.30 game here. But I've, I haven't said it yet, but I've said it so many times. I also think when it comes to United, so much depends on who scores first. Um, I think if West Ham score first, United will uh, more than likely drop their heads. Whereas if we score first, I think we might have a chance. Merry Christmas to you and your family, Mark. Thanks for a great year of content, says Ryan. Thank you very much, Ryan. Don't forget on Christmas Day, we've got our best bits of the year that we put up every year. It's a good watch. I've seen some of it already. And um, I hope Casemiro comes back soon and plays with Maynu. It will really help Maynu to play with great players. Reminds me of a young Pogba, says Sharath Kamath Fitness. And, uh, well, yeah, well, I think we will get better with Casemiro and Martinez back. But who 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 will be injured currently from then? I don't think we're ever going to get this perfect team back that Ten Hag talks about. Um, I mean, look at today. You know, there's always illness. There's always another injury. I don't I don't think we're ever going to get to this promised land of putting our best 11 out. Uh, anonymous clean sheets in the Prem this year. Surprising, but true. Europe, he's been proper toilet, though, says Ryan. And Mark, what games do reindeers play at? Sleepovers. Truth or dear, says Matt Coffey. There we go. Um, yeah, big shout out to Matt, our editor. He's done a great job on the uh, best bits of the year so far and uh, looking forward to seeing the finished article. One boy says, hi, Mark. Question from Germany. What was your f what was your for your fan base's reaction when Moyes won the Conference League? Angry, happy for him or didn't care? Definitely didn't care. I've got, I've got no, no feelings about Moyes at all. Never should have had the job. Fair play. He's at the level he should be. I don't, I don't think about Moyes as a... Former manager, really. 
I take it if you don't like McTominay much, um, it's because he reminds you of Fellaini, says Yaza. I, I, I don't mind him on the bench. I just don't like him starting. At least we're not playing Scooby-Doo as a centre-back, says Tabo. I think he did play as a centre-back when we played against West Ham. I think we played a back five with uh, Jose. Anthony there. Sticky Golf Pro, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for your super chat. Your mate Ali McCoyce has just said McTominay's been a breath of fresh air for United. It's a slick. I like Ali McCoyst, but he has got this Ten Hag illness of uh, this blindness towards Scott McTominay that I just, yeah, I've heard him talk. I'm not, I do like Ali McCoyst, but he, he, maybe because he's Scottish, he, he thinks McTominay's a really important player for United, which is just amazing. Um, <clears throat> all I want for Christmas is McTominay gone, says your boy. Bruno is not a team player. Get him out, says Mitcher. Maria agrees with Ali that McTominay is a breath of fresh air. The only breath of fresh air McTominay would give me is when he opens the door and it's windy and fucks off. Scooby-Doo might ruin the day, but you save it, Mark, says Ollie. How is this young centre-back doing, says Ryan? Steady. He's done all right so far. Mark, the two old villains from Trading Places remind me of Joel and Avram. Merry Christmas to you and the family. I watched that the other night, Fergie. Very good. I'd recommend watching it, Trading Places. It's free on Amazon Prime at the moment as well. Go on. Come on, Rasmus. I thought you were going to get there. There we go. Anthony, come on. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Pass. Bruno, Rasmus, and... Uh, goal kick. Uh, Masson says, Ten McTominay's been carrying United lately. Ten Hag knows more than United fans. Yeah. You're just a troll, mate. Haven't um, you got any Christmas shopping to go and wrap, or are you just a sad twat that no one likes? Because you're talking shite. Um, we don't need a team, says Robert. Uh, we need a team, says Robert, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shit game, I I'll be honest. If you're watching this as a neutral, it's it's rubbish. Um, on both parts. Uh, do you, do, do you ever, Ryan says, everything Ronaldo said in the Piers Morgan interview has been proven right. Yeah, but look, what, Ra what Ronaldo said in that interview wasn't breaking news. That was just Ronaldo wanting to get a move. And everyone sort of acts like he was some sort of messiah and he was actually just saying it to get a move. Why didn't he say it when he was happy at the club? Because it was the same situation. <sighs> What worries me about these sort of games, if I'm going to be completely honest, and I'm, I'm going to refer to the stats carousel here. What worries me about these sort of games is that we're in the game and it's nil-nil, but we've had no shots and we've had no, therefore we've had no shots on target. They've had four shots and one on target. And it's like we're playing West Ham and we're not playing well. And it's like this has been going on all season. And this is what I'm talking about. We might get a goal on the break. We might get a moment, but we've had 22 minutes and we've played shit and it and it's happening all the time. And, uh, you know, we might well win the game. Remember Burnley away? We won. We were shit. Sheffield United, we won. We were shit. Luton at home, we won. We were shit. We might find a way to win it, but we are playing shit this season. And the reason we're playing shit is because there is no shape to the team at all. We can't build patterns because there's no shape. What we try and do is transition quickly on the break. That's all we ever try and do. The, uh, we bypass the midfield, basically. Good teams play through the midfield. Man United bypass the midfield and try and counter. It's counter-attacking football all the time. 
And that's what annoys me about the midfield. It's it's just there's, there's no intent to play through the midfield. And yet you've got players who can do it. Say what you want about McTominay, but he's one of a handful of players that play for the badge. I don't care, EMK. I'm not bothered about that. Fuck's sake. Sheffield United players play for the badge. Couldn't give a shit. We're Manchester United. If you don't play for the badge, you shouldn't be at the fucking club. Playing for the badge, it, I mean, uh, maybe that's because I'm older than some of you lot, but championing playing for the badge is an irritant to me because Paul Ince played for the badge. Dennis Irwin played for the badge. Steve Bruce played for the pa badge. Pallister played for the badge. Paul Parker played for the badge. Roy Keane played for the badge. Mark Hughes played for the badge. Cantona played for the badge. Schmeichel played for the badge. For the badge. Kinchelski's played for the badge. Giggs played for the badge. Oh, I've just named the 94 team. Do you want me to name the 96 team? The 98 team? The 99 team? You know, the good players have always played for the badge at Manchester United. We now champion shit players who play for the badge. It's, 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 I, I will never acknowledge that. It's, it's absolutely embarrassing that we say, well, they might be shit, but at least they play for the badge. Nonsense. It's a nonsense. You should always play for the badge or you shouldn't even be here. It, it goes back to recruitment. I could play for the badge. Should I start then, says Ollie? Well, it's, it's, I, I, I'm never going to champion playing for the badge. It's stupid. Is, Chris, is Gremlins a Christmas film, says 58 Go? I would say it is. There's snow. It's set at Christmas. Corner to West Ham. They're good at set pieces. They've got Ward Prowse. They've got height. This is why we're picking McTominay, remember? And he and he did head I think he did head that away. So, you know, we're going to West Ham and picking tall players because we're scared of West Ham. Joe has gifted a membership. Thank you very much. Twenty five minutes gone here. It ain't a Christmas cracker. It's a Christmas crapper. All oh, Paquetta's in down the left-hand side. That's going to go out. That's going to go out. If we're, yeah, if we're talking about people playing for the badge, then we've got a really big problem. Which we have got a problem. Uh, Ollie, thank you very much. Welcome to the Members Club. I think there's a lot of... Uh, to me, I sense a lot of nervousness from United again. How many touches has McTominay had last 15 minutes, says uh, Gam. Um, I'll tell you. Let me just get onto the app. One football, you can get it on there. Oh, Rasmus nearly got in then. Yeah, but I, I feel that we're playing nervous. You know, all this confidence that we should have probably took from Liverpool, it's, it's non-existent at the moment. Oh, Anana should be getting that. Bloody hell. Talk about communication. So, Maynou's played 17 passes, Bruno's played 20 passes, and McTominay's played 11. So, they're nearly double on him already. Um, touches, he's had 12. Maynou's had 19, and Bruno's had 22. So, it's the same old, same old, isn't it? Not, not really in the game. This is where I struggle with Eric Ten Hag. Other coaches get lesser teams playing better football in a shorter period of time, says James. Sushek's just gone and got a bit of a knock here. Um, 
Jaden says, Mark, if our key players were back, do you think we would perform better, says Jaden? Well, I think we would, but it's no excuse to play as bad as we are without them. There should be some structure and cohesion. Um, Merry Christmas, Mark. I'm watching this game with you, or trying to enjoy it, but I'm enjoying my coffee with Baileys. Keep up the good work, says DJ. I'll tell you what, I'd have one of them coffees with Baileys. We are humstrung in the midfield because Scooby-Doo is neither a creative nor a useful defensive midfielder, says Mott. And all the possession we have is within our half, too slow on the ball, no cutting edge, lack of ideas in general. Well, it's, it's why I've not been critical of Ganacho or Rasmus or Anthony, because they're in the graveyard shift, aren't they? The, the, you know, there's not a lot going on. They're just running around a lot. Uh, Jason says, I don't really understand what, what McTominay does. He's never up front when we have the ball and he's never in defence when we don't have it, says Jason. Well, that's why they call him Casper, isn't it? Bit of a ghost. But it's been scrappy from United so far. And as you can see, we are an hour, half an hour in and we've had no shots at all. So I think we can already assume that the way we're going to win this game is by sc scrapping something, um, really. Uh, Lai says, I don't see the quality of Bruno and McTominay. They shouldn't be in the same team, mate. I said it in the week. If he wants to pick McTominay, drop Bruno. I mean, I'd never do that, but they don't work in the same team. So one of them's got to go. Why is Ten Hag struggling to get the best out of a majority of the players that we know can perform? What is wrong with this club, says Ryan. Right, we're back up and running here. I'll tell you what, though, Maynou's had a very good game. Very assured in that position. But look, he's on his own. Look at Maynou here. Look at where Maynou is and look at where McTominay is and look at where Bruno is. And that's my point. We're playing a one on his own. And then McTominay. And look at McTominay again. He wants to go forward all the time. McTominay and Bruno. Look, look where McTominay is. I want to get in the box. Bruno. If that breaks down, Maynou's on his own. Look how far forward McTominay is all the time. And Bruno wants to do the same. Can't play like this in the Premier League. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing we do this in the Premier League. Have you ever thought about this uh, since March? The rumours Sir Jim is likely to get the club. Our game fall off a cliff and Eric's interview changed to Glazers like. I feel at the moment they had not thought nothing will change, says Chris. Interesting, Chris. Uh, here's Ganacho Into the box. Go on. Go on. Cross, straight to the keeper. Chaz says, Eric Ten Hag plays two attacking midfielders. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? We play with two attacking midfielders and yet we create less chances than most people. Right, here we go. Anthony. Look at where McTominay is. Look at where McTominay is at the moment. He's in Rasmus's position. Look at it. Look at look at where McTominay... I fucking can't understand this. I, I'm actually, like, trying to be fair here. Anthony's got the ball there, and McTominay's ran into the striker position. And it's just... We've got a fucking striker for that. <laughs> I just, just don't get what we're doing. I don't... I don't... I actually don't get what we're doing. Shape-wise, it makes no bloody sense. McTominay or Bebe in their prime. Look, this is not about Scott McTominay, mate. This is about the tactics. It's weird. Welcome to Moyes Ball and you wonder why we moan, says Jimmy. Yeah, West Ham haven't been very good, let's be honest. You don't have a, you don't have to champion playing for badge to respect it, knowing a player has limited abilities, says EMK. No, I don't have to respect it. I don't, I don't agree. We, we disagree, mate. We disagree. You think that... To players who play for the badge should be shouted out. I think I think that's the minimum you should expect from any player. I'd, I'm not going to shout it out. You'd play for the badge. I'd play for the badge. 
I'm not shouting it out. You put the Man United shirt on. Do you know how privileged you are? I'm not shouting you out for running around in a Man United shirt. Jog on. If, if Ten Hag had watched the two seasons of games before he took over, McTominay would be gone, says Noosa. Look, I've, I've said this before. I don't know whether Ollie did it. I don't know whether Mourinho did it. And I certainly don't think Ten Hag did it. He clearly didn't do his homework. And maybe that's what managers do. I don't care what's happened before. I'm in charge now. But there's clearly no looking at what happened to Ollie in the last few weeks and the team he was picking. There's clearly no looking at what, you know, what Rangnick did. Like, because so many managers start doing the same things. This game's a hard watch, says Sheldon. Oh, he's enjoying it. And uh, Sizzik says, if Radcliffe comes in and appoints a top tier CEO and director of football, do you think United will be competitive? Sizzik, mate, if, if, if we bring in a, a top director of football and CEO, do you think they're going to put up with this? I, I, I'd be worried if I was Eric. Survival football again. We've been playing survival football for three months. Oh, Anthony, mistake by West Ham. Pass! Ganacho! I've got the t shirt! He's fucking missed! Oh, come on. Feliz Navidad. That's got, you've got to score here. West Ham make a right mistake. And Anthony pounces on it, does everything right. Look at this. Anthony's there. He's quick. He waits, he waits, he waits. He slips in Ganacho perfectly. You've got to score. You've got to score. It's a, it's, that's, you got to score that. You've got to score that. Especially in a game like this. You've got to score that. It's it's not... I'm not even pissing about. It's a piece of piss. Zach says, I'm glad to see wan back in the team. Overall, the defence has been composed so far. The transition from midfield has been scrappy, says Zach. And if Radley have done that one as well... Well, yeah, you've just got, you've got to take that chance. It's uh, it, it comes from a, mis uh, from a mistake. Rasmus says, nine big chances missed in the Premier League. Even the Luton striker has five goals. Chris, swivel on it. It wasn't Rasmus, it was Ganacho. I thought I thought Anthony did well. Did everything right. Here we go though. They're on the break. This is what let West Ham like to do. Bowen. Cross. Oh, Johnny Evans. He's just stopped a goal there. Johnny Evans just stopped a goal there. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And look, look this is silly from United. Yeah, he stopped a goal. That's a tap-in for Kudus. That is a tap-in from that cross. He's done really well. Um, Mark, what do you think of Tim? I don't know who you're talking about, Jimmy. 50 memberships have just been gifted by the Ripper. I suggest you get your Ws in the chat. 50 memberships. Legend, mate. Absolute legend of the chat. Uh, Ripper. Uh, corner to West Ham, though. They're good at corners. Hi, Mark. Can you shout out Preston Town FC and Saturn FC? My brother and I are managers and the boys will love the shout out. Shout out to Preston Town FC and Saturn FC. Thank you to Justin. Corner to West Ham's coming in. Headed away by Johnny Evans. He's pumped up now. He's pumped up like a beach ball. Uh, yeah, thank you for that, Justin. Why make notes on your phone when you can look like an idiot with your four-colour Briro and a scrap of paper? What a joker, says Noosa. Um, Merry Christmas to you, Mark, and the team. Thank you for everything you do, says Jamie. Merry Christmas to you, mate. And Justin, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much for joining. Um, yeah, Ganacho there. Terrible miss. Terrible. He's got to score that. Got to score that. And that, that doesn't come from good United play. That just comes from, you know, things that can happen in a game. Misplaced pass by West Ham. I thought Anthony won't get any credit, but he did it perfectly. And you've got to score. You've got to score. Because at the other end, they nearly scored as well. Because we got broke upon. <sighs> Please subscribe to the channel, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner. We're getting very close to 1.8 million. Bottom right-hand corner to subscribe. We've got match re player ratings in the second half for you to vote. Each player out of 10. Six being the average. And... Uh... Get up, please get up, Rasmus. Not you. Here we go. Come on, he's going to score this time. Feliz, Feliz Navidad. 
Oh, bollocks. Why didn't he shoot? Why didn't Ganacho shoot? I think he's trying to put the cross into McTominay on the back post. Look. What do you think about Liverpool against Arsenal, says Vic? Well, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not thinking about it at the moment. I will be live on that football. So, corner to Manchester United here. Luke Shaw into Bruno. Little one, two. Uh, it doesn't work. Ganacho blocked. Uh, oh, tell you what, it's going to go for a corner. Keeper looked like he was going to grab hold of that, Ariola, but a uh, little bit of movement. Shot by Mainu. I think it deflects. McTominay gets in the way there and it just uh, sort of puts the keeper off. Merry Christmas to you and the family, mate. Keep up the good work, says Stephen, and to you, mate. Thank you very much. Corner to United. Well, we don't score from corners, that's for sure. And we're not going to score from that one either. Briefcase Wanker says West Ham haven't been very good either. But yeah, that's no that's no excuse for us. If they're not if West Ham aren't playing well, then we should be taking advantage of it. Maynou with the cross. Oh, thought that was a good cross, to be fair. I don't like this. I just don't like this. Look how look how far our midfield is away from the defence. Alexandri, welcome to the Members Club. Bruno's gone down injured. Great tackle by Wan Bissaka. Mainu. Come on, Anthony. Late oh, oh, come on. I think Bruno goes next month, says 58 go. No. Having a bloody laugh, mate. Uh, sorry, Mark, this is out of topic, but my younger brother is admitted to hospital. Thank you for making this time easy. Merry Christmas to you and your family, says Ishan. And uh, obviously thoughts with you, mate, and hopefully your brother is uh, on the mend soon. Uh, Emerson caught Bruno on the follow-through here. Hi, Mark. Why does McTominay keep getting into the striker position and block Rasmus, says Wick? Again, I, I, Tactically, I've got no idea why we keep doing this. I've watched it for four months now and uh, I don't understand it. I don't understand at all why we play two attacking midfielders, one of which goes and occupies the same space as the striker. How's the young centre-back doing, says Jace. Uh, he's done all right. I mean, Bowen got at him a few minutes ago and put a cross in where Evans had to make a last-ditch block. But, uh, I mean, look, he doesn't look like he's the second coming of Sergio Ramos. But... Uh, He's done all right. John, uh, Luke Shaw. That'll be a yellow card there. Yellow card for Kudus. But I think he's doing all right in difficult circumstances. Uh, why are our fullbacks not overlapping, says Jared. And I think our players forget they have two feet, says Ria. Three minutes to half time. A lot of people were saying, should it have been a red card for Emerson there? I didn't even go to the AR by the looks of it. AB says, I'm Ten Hag in as we have bigger issues, but he isn't making it easy. Do you think he truly believes in the midfield formation? Yes, I do. I do, because at the start of the season, he was using Mount in the McTominay position. So he obviously likes the two attacking midfielders. I don't get it. You know what? If we created loads and loads of chances and had a high XG or goal conversion rate, then you'd say playing two attacking midfielders is really working. We don't. We're, we're rubbish at it. Um, here's Anthony. 
Oh, I tell you what, he's put a good cross in there. And I tell you, Anthony, low key, Anthony's having a good game. People won't acknowledge it because they like to get on his back, but he's put a good cross in there and nobody's read it quick enough. Uh, Noosa says, I live in Australia and as a mug, watch all games live. I then go to work tired every time to provide for my family. Loving this uh, club is madness. Festive greetings to the amazing community, says Noosa. Yeah, stay strong, mate. Um, and uh, that's the commitment to being a football fan, isn't it? There's, and specifically United fans. There's a lot of people watching worldwide who get up to watch this all the time. And it's been a long, long journey over the last decade, hasn't it? Of uh... Failure. Um, thank you very much, Noosa, for your super chat. Gibbs says that Anthony's been crap. He's just put a good cross into the box. He intercepted for the second chance for Ganacho, and he created the first chance for Ganacho. So he could have had two assists, but he's playing crap. Mate, you need to learn about agendas and being manipulated by the media because you're not thinking for yourself. You're just, you're just thinking with an agenda. Uh, Bruno's been shit. Ganacho's been shit. McTominay's a ghost and Hoyland's a ghost, says um, Richie. And uh, my sis didn't pay the hula bill now. I missed the game when I remembered you, Mark. Save my vacation. Start. Happy Christmas, Mark, from the US. Let's do it. Happy Christmas, mate. A lot of people will be travelling today. Getting ready for the festive period. And uh, Maynard's has just been caught on the foot by Paquetta. Moyes looks like he's having a crap. <laughs> That's probably what he thinks of this game. Scooby Poo! It's rubbish! Hey, let's be fair. United haven't been great, but West Ham have been probably worse. Considering they're the home team. Oh, Paquetta stood on his foot there. Nothing deliberate in it, but it would have hurt. <sighs> the problem is we don't look like scoring unless it's going to come from a West Ham mistake. Like a misplaced pass or something. It's got, it's got, I, I predicted 1-1. One, one. It's got a draw written all over it, this. Although, here's Kudos. He's done well. Johnny Evans there goes for a throw in. This could be a cup of this could be a cup of tea. My teeth fell out. Did it? Yeah. When? Just in the living room. Hmm. Oh, just in time for Christmas. Let's have, have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at your mouth. Oh yeah. Come on the camera and you can show everyone. A smile. Oh, you can really see it there, look. Well done. First one out, there we go. Tooth fairy tonight then. Yeah. Then Santa. Double whammy. Um, there's a moment and you got to share it. Uh, Anthony crossed, Anthony, I'm starting to think all the reasons we liked Ericsson at number eight last year are the same reasons Ten Hogs wanted to bring someone else in in the summer, says Ollie. Uh, crossed by West Ham into the box and headed wide. I'm Ten Hag in, says Andrew, but he has been lost at since the summer. We then, when the sale did not go through, he thought he was getting guitar and chance to rebuild, but was betrayed. He's lost his dynamism. He's lost his spark, hasn't he? I think I think that's a, a very fair assessment. He's definitely uh, seems to have lost his spark. Ganacho's so selfish, he ignores Rasmus, says Rex. Johnny Evans booked Mark. The ref's a prat, says Man United for life. Paquetta just waved his hand at the ref. No card as well, says Thomas. Hi, Mark. Saw you in the Lego store on Monday, says Kieran. You didn't. And Man United playing some nice football. Merry Christmas, says store. No, we're not. Imagine the difference if we had Son and Salah, says Lekin. Uh, I'd love a video of Seb rating the team for 2023, says Ollie. It'd give everyone a nine. He's very generous. Um, Ganacho, selfish. We've done that one. Uh, we've done that one. Maynu oozes class, says Joel Tomlinson. Watch this space. Um... And how do you highlight a name in the chat, says the Ripper? I don't know. And Anthony Cross with his bloody fright right foot as well, says Brandon. Hoyland should have kept his run going for that cross. It would have been a tap-in, says SL. 
And Rashid says, I've got a feeling that uh, Rasmus is going to score today. I hope so. Anil says that Bruno, Bruno never plays the cross when Hoyland is available in the box. Thank you for those. OK, it's half time. Let's stop the clock. Well, um, yeah, certainly not a classic, but from a Manchester United fan point of view, you can't take your eye off it because we can't afford to take our eye off it. I mean, it'd be lovely to be in a position where we could be wrapping presents and going, we're in a really good position in the league. It doesn't matter if we drop points at West Ham. But um, no, absolutely shit. And it's interesting seeing Rasmus walking off talking to McTominay about stuff when McTominay consistently gets in Rasmus's way. I, I don't, I, I, look, I said it at the start of the game. I said it after the Liverpool game. I said it on the preview. I said it a few times in the week. If he goes with McTominay and Bruno, we will see a shit game of football because the midfield will have no rhythm and no structure. Man United are the only team in the top half of the table that play with no rhythm and no structure because we've got no ability to play through the midfield. It is a mishmash of shitty little hit and hope football. There is no rhythm to what we're doing. Nobody knows the patterns of play they're meant to be playing. There's no passing between the lines. There's no carrying of the ball. There's no, you know, what they call it. Um, what do they call it? Tele telepathic um, passing where you know exactly where a player's going to be. Forget all that. They're always looking up going, where's anybody? Where's anybody? There's, there's nothing going on in that midfield at all. And it breaks everything down every fucking game. And he's gone and played against West Ham, two attacking midfielders, one holding midfielder. And lo and behold, there's a massive gap between the defence and the attack. We can't play through West Ham. And we're looking for these mistakes or long transition balls to break on. We are playing survival football since, was it Fulham? Uh, we, uh, it's, the football is shit. It is shit. And this is why I celebrated the draw at Anfield, because to go to Anfield and get a point when you're playing like we play, what do you expect? It's all, we, it's all we've got. We've got no idea or identity in relation to attacking football. And if we're going to win this game, it will be because West Ham are worse than us and we take a chance, which we should have done with Ganacho. But it ain't going to be pretty. Sultan says we need Rashford back. Um... I'm sure Rashford will come on, Sultan, but I don't know what Rashford's going to do because Rashford's never been the guy that uh, plays in the midfield and passes between the lines. He, he might get you a, 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 you know, he might get you a goal, and, and that would be nice. But um, we're not going to play better football with Rashford in the team. An exhilarating half of football, McTominay man of the match says Zach, and he's enjoying his Christmas. Uh, AB has just gifted five memberships. You're a legend, mate. And Hoyland needs some studs in his boots. Looks like Bambi on ice. Glad we have all week off to train and still look crap, says Sean. It's bad today. It's bad today. Um, not, 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 not shockingly. It's not a shock that it's bad today, but it's bad. It's really bad. And I, th I suppose it's that reality bite, isn't it? That um, you can be critical of the fact that we've got uh, injuries, of course. But I don't think the defence have really done anything wrong. I don't think the defence have had a lot to do. Um We've turned it around in the last 15 minutes, which gives me a little bit of hope because after half an hour, we'd had no shots at all. So in the last 15 minutes of the half, we've had six shots and three on target. So that's encouraging. I specifically remember half an hour in, we'd had no shots and no, no, no shots at all. So that is a little bit of an improvement, but, you know, we're clutching at straws, really. Um, and again, what, what annoys me is West Ham have played really bad. And he's picking that midfield. And I really do think if you took Bruno or McTominay off and put Ericsson or Amrabat on next to Mainu, we'd get hold of the midfield and we'd get higher up the pitch with good possession instead of this transitional bollocks that just is counter-attack. It's counter-attack. Let's call it what it is. It's counter-attacking football. And it's it's, it's it's like what Ollie was doing at the end. It's, it's this, this is not sustainable. Why have we got no plan? When Ange got those injuries, he kept playing the same way. When De Zerbi gets all those injuries, he plays the same way. Why are we not playing football with, with, with an identity? Why are we playing this shit brand of football every week for the last four months? And will it change if we get Casemiro back? Or will he actually just drop Maynou and play Casemiro, McTominay and Bruno? I, I, I'm, I don't have the answers. I do not have the answers because I'm, I'm puzzled. I'm completely and utterly puzzled by what he does with the midfield. Um, time and time again in that half, I saw what I've seen many times this season where Maynou's on his own near the centre-backs and McTominay and Bruno are stood next to Rasmus. And there's this void. 
I remember it happening on the opening game of the season against Wolves. You had Casemiro with maybe Martinez and Varane. I can't remember who played centre-back. And then you had Mount and Bruno stood next to the striker. And this massive gap. And I'm like, this guy used to play possession football at Ajax. What are we doing? And why are we doing this shit in the Premier League? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Uh, Luke Shaw, best player on the pitch. ganacho has been bad, says Dave. I said it a month ago. Will Eric Ten Hag stick or twist? He's stuck with McTominay in midfield. Has lost the courage of his own conviction, says Rory. Uh, hi, Mark. Do you think Ahmad should get a chance when he returns from injury? Um, I actually think Anthony did all right in that half. I do. Um, I'd sub off McTominay for Ericsson, but we know Mainu is the likely sub if it happens. Only Ricky is happy with McTominay playing, says Kay. The reason is that De Zerbi and Ange will get time for messing up and there's a history of our managers not getting time, says Porra. Uh, once McTominay loses his place and we get Martinez back, we'll hopefully see what Eric Ten Hag is trying to do here. McTominay can't hold the ball, says Sam. Uh, also, with so many players in and around the box, they're getting in each other's way, says John. And the injuries are crazy, but we all saw it coming. Ten Hag needs backing, but it won't happen. Although Ten Hag must be playing a better midfield, says Jack. I could be in bed with my wife and I'm watching this dross. Mark, help me, says Nuzza. Get to bed. Get to bed. Sounds a lot better. Um, but look, you know, there was a good comment there. I've seen it and I saw it happen at least two times in that first half. We get the ball to Luke Shaw or Bruno and you just see... McTominay running into the area that Rasmus is and the reason we're doing that is because we're putting a cross in and we're hoping that somebody gets on the end of it but that's not sustainable football you know sending your midfielder into the box where Rasmus is that's just that's basically it's hit and hope like that's just put a cross in and see if it gets on someone's heads overload the box and see what happens like in a way that's Stoke from a Rory Delap throw in Throw loads of bodies in the box and see what happens. You know what? I think it changed with Brentford. Remember Brentford when we were losing 1-0 at Old Trafford and two minutes of stoppage time had gone and we just started throwing these balls into the box and McTominay was in there and Maguire was in there and we got two... McTominay scored two goals. Ever since that game, he seems fixated with... Like he's found some sort of secret weapon in the Premier League. Overload the box and just throw the ball in there. And... You know, it's like a Rory Delap Stoke throwing. Throw the ball in and get bodies in. It's it's not pretty. And look, it might work. It could work against West Ham today. It really could. But it ain't pretty. I would change McTominay for Amrabat. I would also adjust the formation to attacking. Kamwala and Evans has it covered, says Slow Sports News. Uh, Louise Heron, uh, thank you for, Horan, thank you very much. Uh, it's gifted a membership there. Uh, David says, I think Mainu is the best player on the pitch. We don't look like we know how to play with a striker, says David. Well, we haven't really known how to play for a striker for many years, to be honest. But no, Mainu looks like the most accomplished player in that midfield. And I predicted it before the game. He's the one player in that midfield that fills me with some confidence because he knows what he's doing and, he, and he's assured. Um, as I say, I think Luke Shaw's done quite, quite well. Damien says the defence is looking OK. My 12th tier team in Australia has a better structure in the middle, though. Uh, Hoyland with no room to move, says Damien. Uh, does Eric Ten Hag sack himself by relentlessly forcing McTominay into the lineup, says Tyrone? Um, yeah, as I said, it's not about McTominay. It's not about Bruno. It's not about Rasmus. It's about the manager. He's He he doesn't have to pick that midfield. It's not necessity. He doesn't have to pick that midfield. He doesn't have to play with two attacking midfielders and one holding midfielder. He can play with an attacking midfielder and a more, more of a two, um, but he doesn't. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get it. I really don't. Um, what I would say is it's Christmas. Um, do you really want to be spending your Christmas Eve and your Christmas day with your family and your friends or, you know, whatever it is you're going to do thinking about the midfield of Man United, or do you want to be in a position where you can just sit back and, uh, think, you know, you know, I've got to win. Uh, I can, I can worry about it on boxing day when we play, uh, Villa, because that's where I want to be. I, I don't want to be thinking about a scrappy loss at West Ham over the Christmas period. So look, Ganacho should have scored. I feel if we did score, first goal is always important with United. If you score the first one, uh, then we tend to get a good result from it. If we concede first, we tend to bottle it. So, um, But I think it's got a draw written all over it. It feels to me like it's got a draw written all over this game. Uh, please do subscribe, by the way. We're only 100 away from 798,000. Join the United Stand community. We're live every night at 8 o'clock, every morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, giving away some memberships as well tomorrow morning on the Christmas Eve morning show at 10 o'clock. So make sure you tune in for that live. 
Um, we've also got the match reaction coming up straight after this game where I'll do the player ratings, which you can vote for. Mark every player out of 10, six being the average, star for your man of the match. And uh, we've got the fan forum after that. I'm live on That's Football at five o'clock for Liverpool against Arsenal. And then I'm live on Talk Sports at half seven if you want to call in. Um, and uh, then it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, it's all going on. It's all going on. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the player stats. Now, remember, one football you can download for free. Link's in the description, or you can scan the QR code in the top right-hand corner. Get all your latest breaking football news on your Apple or your Android. But they're the team stats. They have the individual player stats as well on the app, which you can check. So download it and have a look. But just to give you a little bit of a, um, a, little bit of a guide as to sort of what's going on, uh, passes, Scott McTominay has played 18 passes. Fernandez Bruno has played 31 and Maynard has played 34. So again, in the midfield, he is just not contributing really at all. Um, he's a long way off Maynard and he's a long way off Bruno, uh, almost half. Touches, he's had 22, Maynard's had 40 and Bruno's had 35. So again, just ghosting really. You know, you could have a player there on the ball a lot more. And I think that's what you need. You need that away from home. Um, loss of possession, McTominay 2, Anthony 2, Bruno 2, Hoyland 2. Um, interceptions, Mainu and Shaw and Wambasaka. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else worth looking at at, at the moment. Um, Ganacho and Anthony have had three dribbles and shots. Four shots from Ganacho, one from Anthony. One from Mainu, none from Hoyland. Just can't, 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 can't get him chances. You know, he's not even having a shot from outside the box, is he? That's never going to go in. And I think that's that's the thing for me with Rasmus. It's the, I don't think people realise this about Rasmus. He gets absolute shit service, and then the shots he does have, they tend to be from silly angles where there's not much chance of scoring anyway. Um, Look, the Liverpool chance last week he should have scored. I admit that. But it is it's it is a graveyard shift, as real life says. Um, the transfer policy of this club is rubbish. We had so many opportunities to bring in Premier League proven midfielders that would have worked for the club, says Justin. Mark, I've been underwhelmed with Hoyland. His touch and decision-making has been incredibly poor, says Zachary. I like Hoyland. I like Hoyland. Um, I don't really care if you don't like him. That's fine. It's called different opinions. But I just said... My big problem is that there is zero service for the striker. So he ain't going to score goals anyway with zero service. When you did the Amrabat breakdown, his best asset was passing into the final third. Is that not what we need for a low block rather than McTominay, says Harry? I don't know why I don't know why Amrabat's not playing. He played well against, probably arguably man of the match against Bayern Munich, a very good team. I thought he did his job against Liverpool and then he's out of the team. People need to stop blaming Ten Hag, says Isaac. He's not the problem. The team's depth has been tested. He had to adapt, Mark. He used to be good. Uh, Mark, you used to be good. Uh, Isaac, um, take your shots. Absolutely fine. Um, I disagree with you. As somebody who backs Ten Hag, I disagree with you. You are using injuries as a reason for that shit. And ultimately, the midfield, he's got options and he picks that shit tactic. He did it against the fir first game of the season. Isaac. Go back, watch the first game of the season. We got dominated in the midfield. He did the same thing. One holding midfielder, Casemiro, Mountain Bruno. Mountain Bruno spent all their time around the box and we created nothing. And Wolves broke on us time and time and time again. And we did it against Newcastle. And we've done it loads of times this season. That's the manager's fault, mate. I don't know why he's doing it. And I hope it's going to work because I don't want him to get sacked. But what he does with his midfield is fucking weird. One holding midfielder and two attacking midfielders, and it's not worked since the opening day. What? Give me, I tell you what, Isaac, give me one good game this season where we've played good football. You won't find one. We, we've played shit football all season. We don't create many chances. We don't convert the chances we create. And we played, the, and it's all because of what he's doing in the midfield. One holding midfielder and then two attacking midfielders, and we don't create chances. At some point, you've got to wake up and go, this isn't working. I'm playing two attacking midfielders and we don't create chances. It's weird. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Uh, Zuma's cat. Mark, help me. <laughs> okay. Um, if I was the manager, I'd make all the players watch your final score player ratings. Mark, you downplay yourself. You know this club better than that last five managers. Maybe minus Ollie's new set. Well, no. 
my opinion is no different to anybody else's, but um, I'm not going to not have that opinion, and I just don't understand what we're doing with the midfield. It's weird. Uh, haven't seen much improvement these past few matches when Hoyland barely receives the ball, yet he gets criticism from the media, says Oscar, because they're thick. It's because they're thick, mate. They don't know. They don't know football. They don't watch the game. They just look at the fucking results and go, "Oh, he must be shit. He hasn't scored again." Uh, that that that's a level of football punditry and analysis that people don't want to do. They don't want to spend two hours of their life actually watching the game and analysing where the problems are. They just want to look at the final score and go, right, let's do a story about why Rasmus is shit. It's, well, uh, let's let let me finish that story very very quickly then, because he he didn't have a shot on goal. To have a shot on goal, you can't score a goal. There we go. Fairy Liquid FC. I can see a few bubbles. We're up and running for the second half anyway. No subs from Man United at half time. Uh, we're 30 subscribers away from 798,000, by the way. Please do subscribe. Bottom right hand corner. Um, would you have made any changes at half time, though, Mark? Uh. Only in the midfield, which I would have changed right at the start. Sack the juggler. My heart sank when I saw he did it again in the midfield. This level of stubbornness is insane, says Iraqi. And when does Eric Ten Hag's job become untenable in your point of view? Another six months of this, says Rory. I think regardless of what happens, it would be it'd be silly to sack a manager when they've got no content, continuity plan. Um, if you sacked Ten Hag, then we haven't got the new director of football and we haven't got the new CEO. So why sack a manager? There's no there's no point sacking a manager when you haven't got the the team above him to decide who should come in. Um, even if we lost this game and lost to Villa, I wouldn't sack him because. You know, you've got to get the structure in above him first. Um, also, you may as well see what happens when the good players come back. But I don't, I've said it before, I wouldn't do it. But new new owner in charge of the footballing side, at least, might have their own ideas about what they want to do. So a, a new director of football might have as well. A new CEO might have as well. So he might be gone in the summer. At time, Casemiro is back. Scooby-Doo should be benched if it the, isn't the case. Eric gets the sack, says Chris. Good pass by Anthony there into Mainu. And a good pass back to Anthony. Welcome to Members Club, Adnan. Ganacho, good ball into Shaw. Little dink. Bruno over the bar. Um, it's very similar to when we tried to play Ozil and Cazorla as cams. There's too many ideas of, as of Creati and the forwards don't know who to run for, says Ethan. Yeah, you don't... I, I think um, Odegaard's suffered with it a little bit this year at Arsenal as well with Havertz. Um, when you play as a number 10, you're the number 10. You don't want another number 10 there. You don't because it, it halves your opportunities. You're getting in the same areas. I don't think it's very often that you see two centre attacking midfielders working in the same team but obviously Arteta's trying to do it a little bit this year and so's Ten Hag Adnan thank you welcome to the members club I hope a shake buys the team and shakes things up says Merck I just hope Man United win this game I came into this I came into this game quite energetic and it, it's sapping me of my Christmas joy comfort and joy Hoyland's poor finishing is due to the lack of service. Since opportunities are scarce, the pressure on Rasmus to convert is immeasurably increased, says Marquitos. Luke says, Odegaard drops deeper now. Stop com commenting on that situation when you don't watch it. Mate, I, I, I watch Arsenal better than most Arsenal fans because I wasn't printing Arteta out t-shirts going Arteta out. I said, stick with him. I can see what he's doing. So don't talk to me about watching a football match. And Odegaard going deeper is not a good thing. He's not having a good season and you're not scoring many goals. So I think that um, 
I think Havertz has, has, has uh, damaged Odegaard this season. That's my analysis of having watched at least 10 games of Arsenal this season. Um, what does anyone see in McTominay, says Joel? Goals. That's that's what McTominay is there to do. Goals. See, there he goes again. Look, watch McTominay. I'm going up front. I've gone up front. Look. Get bodies in the box. I'm not saying he'll score a goal. I'm just saying that's what he's in the team for. Oh, Bruno's going to get booked. I don't think that was a book. I don't think that was a booking. I don't think that was a booking, to be honest. It's one of those. It's one of those. Bit bit soft, but um, he's already given Johnny Evans a soft one, hasn't he? I don't think he got booked for the uh, petulance, Eli. I think he got booked because the referee thought that he pulled him down in a in a dangerous position. He needs, to shop. he needs to stop moaning now, though. They'd be ruining Roy Keane's Christmas with all that. Well, here's an interesting stat for you, uh, and I'm going to tell it you in a moment. In fact, I'll tell it you now. Uh, Manchester United, obviously, uh, here's Marcus Rashford warming up, which is inevitable and I think the right thing to do. But uh, United um, didn't score against Bournemouth, didn't score against Liverpool, so and didn't score in the first half there. So we're 230 minutes without a goal in the Premier League. And if you add in the Bayern Munich game, we're over 300 minutes without a goal. Not scored in our last three games and didn't score in, at half-time here. Money's too tight to mention. Goals are too tight to mention. We can't score. Uh, West Ham with a chance to whip across in here. And it comes from Ward Prowse. People going down in the box. Always get worried about that, but it uh, doesn't look like there's anything going to get given. Bruno stayed down. It's interesting. I said before the game, I was asked before the game if there's any get any players that impress you from West Ham. Um, Alvarez has impressed me again. I think he's a. It's an interesting one. Why, when Ten Hag took over United, a lot of people said we should go for Alvarez. I was like that, and then when he went to, when he was going to Dortmund and we needed a midfielder, I was like, I wonder why we're not doing that. And now he's at West Ham. I look at it and I go. I don't know why we didn't do that, because he's brought Amrabat in, doesn't pick him, but Alvarez is playing as a starter for West Ham every week. Uh, what's more useless, McTominay or a floppy disk, says Zoran, and my friends and I came up with a game you may like. In what minute do you think VAR will make a mess of Liverpool versus Arsenal? Winner gets a pint, says Blicky. Um, 
We need to stop complaining on the pitch, accept it and move on, says Attila, in relation to the refereeing decisions. Lisa, thank you very much. Uh, um, welcome to the Members Club. Good tackle by McTominay there. I mean, defensively, we've looked quite good. I don't know whether that's because West Ham have, have done absolutely no. Oh, here we go. Keep your gob shut. It's going to be a corner. Um, corner to West Ham. Uh, liking the way Hooper's refereeing the game. Come on, United, says Man U in Melbourne. I nearly jinxed it then, and I've done that before. I'm going to keep my gob shut, but uh, I don't think we're defending well. I just think West Ham haven't really attacked that much. Uh, here they've got a corner. This is where we need to be good. We normally panic on crosses, and fuck here now. Anana tips it over. I mean, how is Jared Bowen winning the header from a standing position? Anthony's completely and utterly fucking lost in there. What is Anthony doing there? I mean, Jared Bowen doesn't even jump. Come on, Mark. We don't need Jinx Brig. Or, uh, Jinx Brig's going to shut up. Anyway, it's another corner here, Jim. Cross comes in from Ward Prowse. Well done, Johnny Evans. And that'll do. Goal kick. I need to just stretch. Could be worse. You could have Anthony Taylor and VAR ruining your match as the HPN. Uh, Rashford's come on. And we couldn't break down a marriage after cheating, says Stephen. Oh, interesting. Uh, Rashford's getting a bit of stick for his hair now. Um, let, let him be. Hoyland's been taken off. Well, that's disappointing. That's really disappointing. I, I, I mean, I suppose it just invites Bruno to hit more long balls to Rashford, doesn't it? And then, you know, and then if Rashford scores, he play, he's playing up front, isn't he? I, I, I just, the, it pisses me off. It really pisses me off. I mean, is this just politics? Get Rashford in the team, no matter what. He's not going to play on the wing anymore, so now he's going to be the number 10. If you're going to bring Rashford on, bring him on for Ganacho. <sighs> but this is where I struggle. What's the vision for this team? It, 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 it really does feel like hit and hope. Hit and hope and hope for a mistake. It's a very early sub as well, 58 minutes. Um, 
Sebastian says, Mark, I've just started watching. How's the game been? Well, it's a good time to start watching because you haven't really missed anything. Uh, maybe Ten Hag doesn't want to get a message saying he's bullying if we don't get Rashford on, says Yaza. Uh, apparently, I complain too much. Uh, that's coming in from uh, Mickey. Hoyland is bad. Just face it, says King. No, I won't. I don't have to listen to you. It's called it's called having different opinions. Um, uh, literally had no shots on target and no service for fifty eight minutes and gets taken off. Wazza says, uh, Rashford is a wannabe angry ginge. Alvarez has just taken a knock here. I feel like apologising to anyone who's not a West Ham or Man United fan watching this, by the way, because maybe you're just waiting for that moment where United concede, but uh, we are shit. Eric Ten Hag has bought players he doesn't know how to use. Says uh, the top cat. Uh, apparently, Hoyland may well have a knock. He did go down in the first half. Uh, Ripper says, if you look at Eric Ten Hag's stats, his current PPG was only worse when he was in the Dutch second division in 2012. Um, who's going to be top at Christmas, says Vishesh. Well, whoever wins tonight, it's Liverpool and Arsenal. Here we go. Look, this is this is where we'll have success. Bruno plays a good ball into Ganacho. That transition break football. That's what, it's, it's, it's what we are. It's what we are. Bruno seriously needs to stop moaning, says Jack. This is what we are. Counter attack FC. Mark, I like Ten Hag, but let's be honest, the football is as bad as Oli. Style of football is shit. Getting bored of watching the United these days, says Tom. Still half an hour to go. McTominay. Feel like the midfield has been awful since the likes of Herrera, Carrick, Skulls, Keane played after years of recruiting the standout player is Maynou, says B. Yakov. And uh, as a neutral, I'm waiting for either team to concede at this point, says Merck. I didn't see the back pass from Evans to Anana, mate. I didn't see it. I was, uh, I was too busy, I think. I don't know what I was doing. Smash and grab United, says captain. And there were opportunities, just isn't a killer in the box. No, no, Rory, there wasn't opportunities. Sorry. There wasn't opportunities. Zero service, zero shots. The only one he could have potentially got on the end of was Anthony's cross. But that's not acceptable for a striker of Manchester United to be criticised because they potentially could have got on the end of a cross. You, you, you know. This is not what Andy Cole lived off or Dwight York or Van Nisseroy or Robin Van Persie. You don't live off. You could potentially have got on the end of a cross. You get service, mate. It's, it's, it's shit. Uh, here's Maynou. Edge of the box. Bruno, little dink into Luke Shaw. It's a good ball, Luke Shaw. My Millwall midfield is in 20th. He's doing better than United, says Luke. Bruno, come on. Got to whip that one. Ganacho. Play McTominay's centre forward, says Julian. And Ganacho, that's gone for a goal kick. I just want to look at what we've got on the bench because a lot of people are saying take Ganacho off. Um, Bench-wise, 
for United. You've got Amrabat, Rashford's already on, Eriksen, Regwell on, Pellistri, Donny van der Beek, who I thought was in Frankfurt, Mabry and Bennett. West Ham have got Danny Ings, Fennells, Cresswell, Johnson, Fabianski, Agbonna, Ben Rama. Um, I know we have a lot of injuries, but we are so toothless up top and lacking in every area of the pitch. There is no creativity in this team, says Jay Harris. Uh, Zim Paul says it's so painful to watch this team play. Just want, you know what? All I want for Christmas is to scam three points. <laughs> you know, survival football. Let's scam it. I mean, West Ham. Have, look, we haven't been good, but our West Ham have been shit as well. Let's 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 not heap it. I know as United fans, we've got to be very critical of ourselves, but West Ham have been shit. You know, if I was a West Ham fan, you're at home against this United side, and you've created nothing. Ganacho Martinelli, says Matthew. Well, at the moment, Martinelli, isn't it? Bruno shoots on his left foot from 35 yards. That's a worrying sign. That's a worrying sign when you're doing stuff like that. Uh, we could play all day and not score. Looks like we blew the chances and we got in the first half, but Kane there and we call him uh, finished, says Kay. On a positive note, young centre-back looks comfortable. All the best to you and your family, Mark, says Brian. L look, I think if you are um, Ten Hag and you are Kambuala, you're probably very happy with the game because they're not really getting at us. Is this, if this match continues the way it does, it'll be the most boring match of the day ever together with the Thursday and Friday games, says Robbo96. If he's going to bring Ericsson on, I think it'll be for Mainu. I don't think... I, he won't take McTominay off. Uh, Mark, love all your shows, but I hate tomorrow. My pa my son passed away three years ago, Christmas Eve, but I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, says John. Um, sorry to hear that, John. It's a ho horrible time of the year for people who, you know, have got memories like that. And uh, um, there's not a lot I can say about that, is there? I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, thank you very much. And Merry Christmas to you and Happy New Year. Uh, Nigel says, Bruno shoots aimlessly. He needs to make the extra pass. It's not rocket science, says Nigel. Yeah, nice to see a lot of love in the chat for John there and his family. Well, Ten Hag's talking to McTominay there. Fucking hell. If, if, that, if that, mate, if that's your plan, if McTominay's the guy in your team... Fuckers, you know, we're fucked. <sighs> Seriously, this guy has had more chances than John Terry's had from his wife. It's 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 ridiculous. I don't I just don't get it. I, I don't get it anymore. Just win this game. I want to go on and enjoy my Christmas. Luke Shaw, come on. Oh, good cross. I thought it was going to come to Ganacho. My friend Arhan said Ten Hag is a bold fraud, says Russian. Uh, can we please drop McTominay now, says Z3. And Rashford for Hoyland is useless. If there's no service for Hoyland, then it's the same result for Rashford. It's like reading the same book twice and expecting a different ending, says Louis. Well, we are... Look, as I said, West Ham have been pretty shit in this game. So, um... 
at least there is a chance that we will keep pushing and the chance will come to us. Here's Luke Shaw. Mm, head tennis and it's cleared. Uh, Danny Bravo says, Mark, my brother Alan says you like his haircuts and thinks Maguire is the fifth best defender in the world. Do you agree? Well, no, Harry Maguire's not the best. I don't know what you're talking about. That. I'm trying to read the haircut thing. Um, yeah, Maguire's not the fifth, fifth best, best centre-back in England, uh, in the world. He wasn't the fifth best centre-back at Man United last season. Uh, what the fuck are we doing? We are overcomplicating simple passes, says Nicholas Hardy. Shooting from stupid angles. We've been doing it for years. We, why do we keep doing this crap, says Nicholas. Uh, mate, it needs knock it. Look, I, I, you know, we're, we're becoming spurs under Mourinho and Conte where the football is just crap. And you sort of grind your way into these top four races, but the football is shit. We need to change. The whole club needs to change from top to bottom. Break it down and start again. It's crap. And I, I don't necessarily blame Ten Hag or Ranjit because I think they can play good football, but it's the players. Until we tear that squad apart, we, you will struggle. I, I still think there's people in our fan base that think we can play good football with these players. We can't play possession-based football like Spurs and Brighton and City and Arsenal with these players. They can't do it. So you've got to grow a pair and fuck them off. Because every manager, we, we, we change the manager and we bring a manager in that plays a brand of football and then we moan when we don't do that brand of football, but we don't play the, we don't change the players. Scott McTominay, Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, they can't play the way that decent teams play football. They can play counter-attack, but they can't play possession-based football. I like Eric, but he contradicts himself. He would take off Casemiro for Ericsson and say it was for more football, but keeps McTominay on the pitch, says United Nate. Well, I mean, that that is one of the stupidest comments of his career. We took Casemiro off to play more football. We haven't played football all season. We, we haven't played good football all season. Goal. Fuck off! Absolute twats! You can clip that, what I just said there as well. Jared Bowen, nobody doing anything in the defence. Fucking useless. Absolutely useless. Nobody tracks the run. Don't know what the keeper's doing again. Invisible man at the back. And the defence just snoozing, sleeping, sleeping at Christmas. Stuffed on like a fucking turkey. That, and it, you know what? It comes from again. He's picked a midfield that is about as useful as a no entry sign on a porn star's knickers. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. You're a fucking idiot, mate. You're an absolute idiot. Why can I and all of you sit at home and say that midfield is fucking shite? And he, and he runs off. He runs off Bruno. He runs off Bruno. Bow, Bowen runs off Bruno. So he's ran off a midfielder. It's the midfield runners again. Midfield runners again. McTominay's not tight enough to Paqueta. Bruno's let him run off him. Anana's not done well enough there as well. Anana's not done well enough there. It's in his fucking hand. Anana's not done well enough there. He's not quick enough off his line again. He doesn't close the, close the angle well enough again. He's left his front post. Ah, oh, It's just the same old shit all the time. United Nate TC says, I like Eric, but he contradicts himself. Yeah, I've done that one. I was reading that one. I'm sick of these fans being harsh on Rad Rasmus. He barely gets a chance, says Kieran. And if Hoyland got Kevin De Bruyne passes, he would be one of the top scorers in the Premier League, says Gold Star. Now we're panicking at the back. See, that's it. We we, we concede first and they'll, they'll bottle this. Um... Defence can only last for so long, says GP. You know what pisses me off about that goal is that West Ham have played terrible. West Ham fans would even admit it. West Ham have played absolutely terrible. And what do United do? They get they don't pick up the runners from midfield again. Incredible. Look, 
bottom line, said it after Liverpool, said it all week. We've been talking about it all fucking week. Do not play Bruno and McTominay in midfield. We don't create any chances to have two attacking midfielders and the midfield gets overrun. Tight game, 20 minutes to go. West Ham on the attack, no danger. Bowen plays a ball to Paqueta. McTominay's not tight enough to Paqueta. Bruno leaves Bowen. Bowen gets it from Paqueta and Arna makes a mistake, 1-0. That's all because you've got two attacking midfielders playing in the midfield. Bruno's got no awareness to run with Bowen and Bowen, you know, and McTominay's not tight enough to Paqueta. You've got an Amrabat in there or, or a defensive-minded midfielder. They will, they will go with the runner and they, or they'll be tighter. We're playing two attacking midfielders for no fucking reason. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of highlighting, as I'm sure all of you are, that that midfield doesn't work and we've been playing shit all season and we've been conceding goals because of it all season. Do you think the keeper should have done better? If I, mate, if I speak about Anana, then I'll just get called all sorts. I'm not saying anything. He should have saved it. McTominay's so bad. I've had it with Ten Hag. He's so clueless. Anyone with a, uh, would be a better coach than him, says Kevin. Um, sorry, Mark, I've been Ten Hag in for so long, but these lineups are a joke, says Cody. And don't get upset, but what has Eric Ten Hag done that you actually like? Because I can give you 100 things that is ridiculous, says Parker. Mate, I, I, I don't want to have that conversation at the moment. I'm not letting it dictate my Christmas. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Bruno's been playing worse, but isn't the direct consequences of him having to do more with McTominay being invisible. But Bruno is basically playing as an eight and he's a fucking number 10. You've got Amrabat and Eriksen sat on their arse and he won't fucking pick them because he's doing this shitty midfield and I'm fucking fed up of it. Unsure how having Amrabat changes this game. He's so poor but runs a bit like, well, Reese, it changes the game because you have two people in the midfield instead of one. Never turned off a game before. Sorry, I'll, I'll read that. Aldo says there's backing the manager, but these, uh, his signings are crap, says Aldo. We need to sign a centre forward, uh, says Theon. Uh, Jim says the problem is that Bruno's playing too deep and McTominay pushes forward and doesn't do anything. He doesn't create anything, just a body up front. I can't believe Ten Hag doesn't see it. It's on the manager, Jim. You're right, it's on the manager. Uh, never turned off a game before, but today's enough, says Stephen. And unsure how have uh, done that one, done that one, done that one. Well, the problem is now that since West Ham have scored, and this, this is another thing that happens with United, when we concede, we somehow conspire to let the opposition have more of the ball. So not only do we concede, but we give up. And since West Ham have scored, they've looked like, they didn't look like they were going to score. And since they've scored, they have looked like they're going to score. And they're in again. Could uh, is that is that could us? Oh fuck off! I told you they were panicking, like a fucking nonce in a prison riot. That defence was panicking ever since they scored, and now look at this: two nil. It's it's like a pack of cards. It's absolutely incredible. It's so predictable. They concede a goal and they give up. Absolute cowards. Absolute shithouses. The same every fucking time. The first goal goes in and Manchester United shit themselves. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Fucking rubbish, mate. I tell you, I just... I just fuck off. Absolute joke. And you've only got yourself to blame, Eric. You picked a shit midfield and... Fuck off. Stupid. Absolute stupid. Absolutely stupid. Where's the midfield here? Look at look at this. Look at that. Mainu on his fucking own because B McTominay's fucking playing up front. Unbelievable. 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 Look at when Mainu has the ball there 
and look at where Scott McTominay is. I'm off up front again, Eric. Is that all right? Just hang around for a tap in, yeah? Yeah? What did I say? Absolutely predictable. I said it after the Liverpool game. If you pick McTominay and Bruno, you're a fucking idiot. And you've done it. You're a fucking idiot, mate. Absolute idiot. Talking about, talk about sacking yourself. What, what, what is this guy on? Is he on the mauled wine early? What the fuck is he on? Does he not listen to people? Did he not look at what Solskjaer did? Solskjaer did exactly the same, mate. Picked McTominay in his midfield with Fred and lost his fucking job. I mean, McTominay was shit against Liverpool. He was absolute shite. And he's picked him in the midfield again. You've got, you've got one of the most creative number 10s in the league. You're using him as a number 8 so you can use a, a bloody big goal hanger to run up front. And the football is shite, mate. It's crap. It's so bad. Oh, fucking hell. I, d I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Rashford just shooting over the bar from 30 yards. Oh, disgrace, says Reese. Um, but it's nothing new. What the hell is Eric thinking, says Reese. And uh, if we play in like this against Wigan, we're seriously in the mud, says Ollie. And how many times do you have to eat shit before you realise it's shit? This isn't Man United. That's the worst criticism I can give underdogs in every game, says Jake. Uh, can't wait for Ten Hag to remind us how well we played against Galatasaray, says Playaholic. Um, highlights of Ten Hag's season is that win against Liverpool last week, says Robbo. Evans is like an old man with dementia, lost in a shopping centre, says Sean. Um, I'm done now. I want him and his signings gone. This is just too much. The keeper is a joke. Anthony's terrible. No style of play, says Sean. Uh, we bought a ball-playing goalkeeper when we don't have a ball-playing team, says Christopher. And uh, I can't wait for Faz's updated list, says Matthew Gartel. Oh, I just don't. I just don't. I, don't, I just don't. I, I, I just, I just, fucking hell. It's predictable, but I didn't expect it. Maynou's passed the ball 64 times. Bruno has passed the ball 51 times. McTominay has passed the ball 33 times. Madness. Absolute madness. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel, by the way. We uh, we were nearly at 798,000 on the road to 1.8 million. Player ratings, I'm going to whack in the video description for you now. Mark every player out of 10, 6 being the average. It's, it's going to be a depressing Christmas. I didn't want this for us. I didn't want this. I wanted us tomorrow to be relaxing, Christmas Day, relaxing, you know, with some crumb of comfort after a shite season. And actually, it's just going to be worse. Do you think you can collect um, more points than Ranjik Oli sees? And I doubt it, says Basil. Well, the trouble is it's the same old shit, isn't it? Where the players are basically downing tools. Um, I, 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 look, I visibly saw it. I visibly saw it when we went 1-0 down. Uh, too late now. Too fucking late. Look, Ericsson and... What, well, Ericsson and uh, Regwalon with uh, seven minutes to go. Ganacho is wasteful. He's becoming another Rashford to Salim. We conceded and just looks like we're melting away. It's not just McTominay. The whole team, including the manager, all craps, says Bo. And he's a great manager. He just isn't the right man for the job. Just a shame there isn't a good alternative out there, says Offred. Mark, as long as the Glazers are still in, flipping managers will mean nothing, says Reswan. And I finally decided I'm Eric Ten Hag out, says Tanks. 
Can't believe how often we give the ball away, says Darry. Look, I was going to keep it back for the match reaction, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a spoiler now. I'm not Ten Hag out. I'm not Ten Hag out because you, you, you people who are saying you're Ten Hag out is, are convincing me not to be Ten Hag out because literally we've been here before. It's the fucking players, ladies and gentlemen. Can you not see them just give up? They give up. Like, Ten Hag probably isn't the right man for Man United. I can accept that. But if we sack Ten Hag, we get another bounce from these same shitty players who win again with their agents and mates who've been leaking to the press. They survive. Another manager gets, gets in. They have four or five months where they do well. And then they'll fucking ruin it again. I... I'm telling you now, I would keep Ten Hag to sack and get rid of four or five of those players on the pitch. But it will never happen. So the cycle will keep going on and on and on. The players are the problem. The manager is a problem. But Ranić was a problem. Oli was a problem. Mourinho was a problem. But were they the problem. The problem at Man United is not the manager. The problem at Manchester United is the same problem. I've just tweeted it there. There's players on this pitch who've sacked two or three managers already. Two or three managers have been sacked already because of these uh, players. I've been seeing at Ten Hag in, but it looks like he's lost the plot, says Ricky. Look, I I'm not, I'm in a conflicted position here because Ten Hag has fucked me off today. Big time. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a managerial genius and neither are any of you. But I, I said this after Liverpool. If he goes with that uh, McTominay and Bruno thing, then, you know, it, it will cost us. And it has. And you shouldn't be able to predict football like that. But, but it was so predictable. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of being fucking right about, um, about things that, are so obvious. In fact, I tell you what. I've just tweeted it. 18th of December, five days ago. Look at what I tweeted. I've just retweeted it. Go and have a look on at Mark Goldbridge, what I tweeted. And it's not rocket science. Every one of you probably thought the same, but our manager, our manager doesn't under, doesn't get it. I, bet, I tweeted on, on, on Monday morning, I tweeted, Morning all, happy with the point at Anfield, but we need to move on and get something at West Ham or it means nothing. My concern is he'll drop Mainu or Amrabat and keep Bruno and McTominay together. Big mistake. And I'm gar I guarantee every one of you saw it. Every, every, every one of you probably thought it as well. <sighs> madness absolute madness um uh, i don't know whether we've had the pleasure of looking at the league table but just to show you down to eighth in the league 28 points we'd be ninth if brighton had won against palace um obviously chelsea play tomorrow We've got Villa. Oh, it's just, it's just, a it's a depressing scene. It really is a depressing scene. Uh, Robbo says, as a neutral, the pundits don't help United's case by failing to call out the real problems, not daring to criti criticise McTominay's midfield ability, says Robbo. Yeah, love Ten Hag, but he's forcing himself out, says Dane Brown. Poor sex selections and repeated mistakes. I agree. Uh, fed up with this crap. Going to be a long season, says Jack. I'm not a ter Ten Hag out, but this is unacceptable. I'm furious about the midfield, but I'm sick of seeing these players sack managers, says Jake. I've been Ten Hag in all the way, says Stig. Never any doubt, but picking this midfield has me in shock. He has no clue. The players are not picking the team, says Stig. And just say it, Mark. It's time now. I wanted Eric Ten Hag, but playing that midfield is so... No, Chris, I, I don't need to say it because I don't feel it. I, I, I don't feel like... And, and if some of you do, that's fine. That's what the community is all about. I'm sure on the fan forum, there'll be plenty of people saying Ten Hag out. I, it's not in my vocabulary to do that at the moment because I just don't think it will change anything. You bring in a manager, who's it going to be for a start? And you bring a manager in and the players are even more empowered. You know, whoever the problems are in that team, and we can all pick names, they become more empowered if they survive again. 
at some point you've got to you've, you've got to clear out. You've got to clear house. You can't just keep sacking a manager. People offer blame the keeper or defence after losses like this. I just hope everyone remembers the two chances missed by Ganacho, says Alex. Uh, no one cross finds a man, uh, not uh, one pass into the box finds a man. Two versus one, kudos, no one presses him, no energy, no motivation. It's depressing. I started laughing. What are they training all week, says Vita. Um, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it is absolutely shocking to see how we down tools so regularly in these types of games when we go one nil down i keep saying it. It, it, it it's so it's so clear to me and i keep saying it we the first goal is always so important with manchester united if we concede first the heads drop at manchester united heads drop when we concede first it's 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 crazy it's crazy i've seen it happen about six times this season where we can, like Brighton, Brighton at home. We were all right for the first 15 minutes. They score and then Brighton take hold of the game. How does that even work? How does that work that when you concede a goal, you actually end up having less possession? Incredible. And the reason it happens is because they're bottlers. Absolute bottlers. But Eric Ten Hag has to take the blame tonight. Uh, th but it's not even tonight yet, is it? I wish it was. Um, yeah, Ten Hag has to take the blame. There's, there's no two ways about it. He's, um, I can't, I can't put the tweet out I put out on Monday and then pretend that Ten Hag's not to blame when he does something that I said would be a massive mistake, and and he's done it. So, I mean, the Rashford substitution has worked fantastically shite, hasn't it? Really. They might score though. No. No. Six minutes of added time and we can't even fucking score offside. Well, get ready for the fan forum because they'll definitely have different opinions to me. Heads drop, but no guidance from the managers, says Kipper. And uh, Mark, get out of my club. Uh, where was all this when McTominay won you three games single-handedly? I hate your player agenda, says Chris. If Ricky says we're better with, off without Bruno because we drew against Liverpool without him, I'm going to lose my mind, says Sir Hawk. And Mark, one more thing I noticed today after the goals, we just stopped playing, not even a reaction. It's, it's not, you won't have noticed that today, Nickette. You won't have noticed that today. It's been happening all fucking season. Um, but look, there's players on that pitch. You can see them. There's players that have come on. I mean, does Rashford look interested? Let, let, let's be honest, does Rashford look interested or does he look like he's a player that's thinking, I want a new manager so I can get me and my mate back in the team? Uh, it needs, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, player of the year last year doesn't look like he, he can be asked. Just doesn't look like he can be asked. I am Ten Hag in, but to be honest, tactically he might be okay, but has not improved any players while he's been in charge. Well, last season did happen. I'll add, and let's not pretend that last season didn't happen. Uh, Kudos, 35 million versus Anthony, both from Ajax. Eric Ten Hag outs his hat. Look, you may well get your way. You may well get your way. But all I'm going to say is, when you sack Ten Hag, and in two years' time, you're back here sacking another manager, I'm just going to sit here and say, I told you, when you started saying to sack Ten Hag, I said to you, if you sack Ten Hag, all those players will stay at this football club and do the same again. These players aren't good enough. Mourinho said there are players at that club that I told them to get rid of in the first six months and they're still there now. Player power wins again when the manager gets sacked. But player power is winning anyway. These players are losing these games. They're, they're losing these games on purpose. Um... They're losing these games on purpose. They've been doing it for weeks. They can't be asked. They've not got the mentality. They're not bothered. They're, they're, they're thinking about another manager. Marvel says, if we got relegated, would you be 10? Mate, he's, he's going to lose his job. But I'm just saying to you, the manager is not the problem at Manchester United. It's a problem, but it's not the problem. And, and, and 
I'm tired of listening to football fans of this football club tell me that Ten Hag needs to be sacked and then everything's going to be all right. It, it, it's not going to be all right. It, 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 there are so many things that need to be done and I'm tired of, you know, jumping on the bandwagon that's led by morons that let's sack the manager and start again. It can't happen again. You can't just keep sacking managers. We can't just keep doing this. It's, we've been in this position for 10 years. It's got to be more than that. What makes you think the players can do better? That is your level, says Sidant. And and you think Ten Hag would sell McShite in the summer? It ain't happening, says Big. And what if the next manager comes in and picks McTominay? You know, every, every manager at this football club has picked McTominay. So Ranić did it. Jose did it. Oli did it. Ten Hag did it. Why? Red since 1975 says, my argument would be who would want to buy these players and introduce rotten apples into their settled squads? Ross says, honestly, Mark, this club needs a fresh start. In my opinion, Rashford has done his time as well as Bruno. I'd rather focus on a consistent squad, says Ross. Uh, Dylan, welcome to the members club. Uh, Mark, get a cement. Players doesn't pick themselves. Come on, even the players are risk losing it. Why is it letting it happen, says Sully. Um, I 100% agree with backing the manager to clear the rot. This is just the worst manager to back. He wants to sell our good players, says Parker. And McTominay will be the end of three managers. He's not even championship level. I really question what makes managers love him, says Diego. And it's not about getting our way. As fans have no power, the only question is, is he good enough? If no, sack. Never mind after that, says Rory. And these guys are killing my will to watch Man United games, says Rhea. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Daniel says you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Absolutely pathetic. Referee blows the whistle. Ten Hag shakes hands with David Moyes. Um, you know what? We'll go straight over to the match reaction. But, you know, you look at that game and you think, really, when West Ham scored the first one, you could argue that it didn't look like West Ham were going to score. United were doing more of the attacking without really doing anything. West Ham score one goal and United give up. And that's how fragile Manchester United are. That's how fragile we are. It's, it, it's really that simple. Um, right, let's get over to do the match reactions. Player ratings, mark every player out of 10, six being the average. And that's what the Glazers will never understand. I just miss my football club, says James Clough. Um, no youth players progression. Let's be honest, Ten Hag is not helping, says Adyen. Um, and should we never sack another manager again? What the hell? He is the one that's picking this crap, says Kristen. Mate, if you don't look, you can scream and shout all you like and you're expressing your opinion. Of course, I'm not saying you, you you shouldn't sack a manager. I don't I don't control whether you sack a manager. But what I'm saying is, Ranić got sacked because the team was playing shit. Mourinho got sacked because the team was playing shit. Oli got sacked because the team was playing shit. Van Hal got sacked because the team was playing shit. And now you're going to sack Ten Hag because the team's playing shit. Um, there's a running theme there. The team still plays shit. So the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. This team has got players walking off that pitch who've sacked three managers and you're going to let them stay and change the manager again and not expect the same problems. They become more empowered every time you sack a manager and say it's not their fault. Player power at Man United is a huge problem. Mourinho did an article on it this week. Players as agents ringing him up and calling him a bully for subbing them off. The club is a fucking cesspit. It's a cesspit from top to bottom. I'm not saying changing the manager isn't a good idea, but it can't just be that. And we always fall into this silly trap of sacking the manager and putting it all on the manager. And if you think everything's on the manager, then I'm sorry. I think that's wrong. But look, we'll get more into it on the match reaction. I will see you over there in a minute. 